Welcome to episode 5 of the Cross Realm Podcast, the gaming and entertainment podcast hosted by CRR Gaming Group members. Today is March 29th, 2018. You can reach the show by emailing at uh, crossrealmrebellion at gmail.com. You can tweet the show at crossrealmpod on Twitter. You can grab the RSS feed, get our show notes, and leave us a voice message at anchor.fm slash crossrealmpodcast and apply to join us in-game at crossrealmrebellion.com. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce people. I think the uh, the tag got misplaced, but uh, starting out, we have Cricket. And, yeah, okay. <laughs> Howdy. How was you? <laughs> well, that was a good time for that audio. Um, anyway, <laughs> we've got Esme. Esme hello, Esme. hello. Faux Render. What up? Cyber Judge. Hello. Gigabyte. Hello. And myself, Electron. Welcome, Relectron. Um, We're so offbeat tonight. <laughs> let's just say welcome to Cyber Judge, because this is his first time recording with us in a while. Yeah, that's true. I've only is missed he... one. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Have I mean, you been here it feels for a like long? longer. It's number five. <laughs> yeah, I did uh, three. I missed four because that was your first Thursday, and now I'm here oh, that's uh, right. this that's Thursday right. because okay. I don't have to work tomorrow. So. And it feels yeah. longer to me because I think I missed number three. So that's... Yes. That makes Bunch sense. Bunch of missers. Well, we're not going to miss the main topic. Oh, right. I figured the main topic. Faux picked one last week. I thought I'd toss one in this week because April Fool's Day is approaching. So I thought we could share some of our April Fool's. And I also wanted to add some that were family friendly. So it would apply for everyone. And some of the ideas that I found were it came off from parenting.com. That's how I know they're friendly. There were some that were even more like, oh, hell no, I wouldn't even do that to my family. <laughs> there are some really crazy ones. But um, one of the ones I thought was neat, it was uh, paint a bar of soap with clear nail polish and let it dry. Put the non-sudsy soap back in the shower and wait for the questions to begin. <laughs> so that's very doable. What would you guys think if you were lathering up and your soap just wasn't lathering? It was just, you're just That's rubbing funny. a bar over your body and nothing's happening. Well, that wouldn't catch me because I use uh, body wash. Of course you do. Yeah, oh, That's funny. Is. Yes, it yeah, is. Yeah, I don't, I don't use a bar of soap either. Hmm. Well then, what about this? Buy a bag of yellow onions and dip them <laughs> in melted candy to make them look like caramel apples. Then you offer the family the pungent pranks after dinner. So what would you do like, if somebody did that to you? I feel like the shape is different enough you'd notice. I don't know the uh, picture. It looks really similar. Plus the caramel kind of hides all the imperfections. Yeah, yeah I, I've seen point. I've seen people talk about doing that like at you know, Halloween time uh -huh. uh, as well. Yeah, I, I could definitely see how you could fool somebody it's evil. with it because it's pure you, know, you evil. get the right you know, <laughs> onion and yeah, you just bite into it and yes. Now, uh, and I the mean, best if part you put is nuts on it. It would totally hide any. You know, you could even that out. Well, so one of the best parts is I know at least when I eat it, usually a lot of times you know I'll take the first couple bites would be just the candy coating. Like if I get candy uh -huh. apple, um, so I wouldn't notice it right away. So it would be one of those delayed things. Like mm, this is so good, I'm really enjoying this because I'm right. I'm, sitting there, I'm getting this candy, and then all of a sudden. Surprise! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Mouthful of bleh. So I, um, think it here's would be a, I thought this was kind of cool, but then I thought we might end up with Smurf kids. Swab the inside of the bathroom faucet with blue food gel dye. When your child turns on the handle, they'll get a big blue surprise. <laughs> <laughs> you can probably even do that I mean, to your significant other like if you set up like a candlelit bath. <laughs> I definitely would not. Wanna... I definitely would not suggest that for if you have young kids because then you're going to be responsible for cleaning them up anyway. Yeah. So if it's kids that they're going to have, they're going to old enough and going to clean themselves <laughs> up, that's a different story. So that would be so creepy. It'd be weirder if you did it with red. It made it look like you know red was coming out of the faucet. That would freak me out. That might be a good Halloween prank. Um, I don't think it would be that much red though. It probably looked just pink if you tried that. Um, fill your this one was cruel. This one, but not bad though. But like, come on, fill your child's usual juice cup cup with gelatin after dinner and place it in the refrigerator in the morning when the drink is firm. Offer your little one a sip and watch them wonder what happens because <laughs> it looks totally like juice and you like have the straw in it or whatever. It's like crazy, but then it's not too bad because then they get to eat the jello and they're fine. But that would definitely be a mind screw um prank both kids and dad by placing small pieces of clear tape over the sensors on the television and gaming console remotes have and you guys ever heard how many guys play games oh it just says this is from a woman's point of view so yeah. i guess you could uh put it on your wife's as well 
So, geez, you got to piss on my freaking parade all the time, dude. <laughs> Fill in I the do. blank, man. Fill in the blank. Um, over the sink, poke tight. Now, this one I thought might be interesting. Poke uh, tiny holes in plastic water bottle using a sewing needle and then gently wipe down the outside and set the bottle on the counter. When someone picks it up, the pressure of their hand causes a light spray of water to go everywhere. That would be funny to do at work to like a co I've done that before, yeah. Have you? Have you? How'd it go? Exactly the way you think it would. <laughs> they turn it on and water would spray out at them. Did they know it was you though? No. No, they didn't. I didn't not. do it at work. I did it at home. Oh, you did it at home. Okay. Oh, right. And then uh, trick your kids into thinking you knocked your teeth out by placing gummy teeth over your real ones before accidentally bumping into something that makes them fall out onto the floor. You'll freak them out for a few seconds anyway. I feel like that could be traumatizing. <laughs> I like... feel like that would be the funniest one of, of, of all. Could you imagine? It also depends store. on how old they are, because like, if they're a little too young, you could really freak them out. Yeah, yeah. I would think it'd almost be good to do it like while you're grocery shopping and just like not pay attention and ram your card into something and then oh. look at a customer and have your teeth pop out. <laughs> that would be funnier. <laughs> that would be funnier. If you're not just tricking your kids. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. So um, I did tweet it out and Miss Emma Ty, one of our CRR members, replied, I've always wanted to fill a donut with mayo. I just don't think anyone at my work would believe I'd actually bring in normal donuts. Maybe I could make my husband fall for it. Um, well, that sounds like she might be that's a messed bit of a up, but how bad can that be though? I like God. mayonnaise. But Maybe I not. I know, but, donut, but when you're, though. especially if, you know, it has the glazing to it, and then you bite in, you get that glazed, sugary flavor with the mayo. I can just. That might be good. I'll be like, no one toss no. like a piece of bacon in there. I think with yeah. Bacon. Actually, I've had donuts with bacon before. It was interesting. <laughs> Actually, it was like it was like maple maple. Uh, it was like a maple brown sugar donut with bacon. Oh, I was like, those. it was it was okay, but I feel like the for some reason, just in that case, it, it clashed a bit. Okay. Well. Um, anyway, I was, sorry. I asked. I'll, I asked the group what you guys have done um, for April Fools, or if you haven't done one, have done to you, or some ideas you wanted to try. So um, a couple of the pranks that I've done was um, I made my mom when I was younger, I made her think her TV was possessed because she'd always watch like this Christian broadcast at night. So then when she went to get in her shower, I, um, I took her TV remote and I hid in her closet and I would flip back and forth. Remember that show Unsolved Mysteries? I don't know if it's still on, but it was really creepy when you're little. Like it was really creepy. Do you guys ever remember that show? Yep. I remember it. Yeah. And they would do like interviews with someone, but the person wouldn't want to be on the screen. So they would do that distorted voice and they would make the person show the person in a dark room and from their back of the back of them. So you hear this like, you know, like this really distorted voice to hide their identity. And so I would flip it back and forth from the Christian channel to the creepy channel to the Christian channel, creepy channel. <laughs> and my mom just started like her eyes got really big and she's staring around her room, like wondering if there was like some ghost or something messing with her TV. <laughs> and I just I could never hold it. I really love coming up with pranks, but I could never hold my laughter in long enough for them to come to you like, are fruition. Awful to your mom. It was freaking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so many times. Yeah, that's how it was, man. It was so funny. And uh, one of the other times, um, I told, oh, I waited till my husband fell asleep. This is when we first moved in with each other, and I, he fell asleep. And for April Fools, I painted his nails red, and then um, with a base coat, two top color coats, and a top coat, so they weren't moving. <laughs> Those puppies are done. Plus, because I, I was in cosmetology school too, so I was like, I'm gonna do this shit right. And I sat down and I did his nails, and he was passed out. And then when he woke up, I was like, Hey, you want to go to the store? We got a good couple things. And he didn't know he wore his nail. She knew he wore his polished hands all through the store. He went to go and pay, and they looked down. He was like, Damn it, woman! <laughs> 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 he was, he lost his mind at the cash register and I just could not stop. They're like, that'll be twenty two fifty, sir. I mean, ma'am. <laughs> it was hilarious. it was so funny. Uh and he cause it, it was extra mut it was like extra good because he's such uh like raw like a uh, rough around the edges yeah. kinda guy. My wife used to paint my toenails her. while I, while I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, just man. something satisfying. <laughs> Things to Dude, watch out for when you're in a relationship. Exactly. It's so funny. <laughs> 
So, and then the last prank that I remember having so much fun, other than like the rubber band around the water sprayer that you see on like America's Funniest Home Videos, like everybody's done that, but it's so freaking hilarious anyways, but um, was the saran wrap on the toilet. that We, we learned that when we were young. Yes, like, we that just, I've yeah, done before too. The funniest. So. I feel like that would be. We did that at band camp. Yes, at band camp. Okay, so I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I've heard of this before, but I don't know the specifics. If it's what I'm thinking it is, wouldn't it make a mess? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Exactly. Okay. That's and, the whole yes. Point. and it depends. It might make a little mess, or it might make a big, a mess. very big mess. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, essentially, you you know, you lift you lift the. Uh, it might the seat, make a puddle, you, or it might put, make a pancake. Exactly. Or a ladder. <laughs> yeah, but you, you you lift the seat, put the saran wrap down, and put the seat back on, and. Okay. Yep. That's that's what I thought. Puddles of yeah. pancakes. Puddles what, and pancakes. Puddles of pancakes. That's what's happening. <laughs> that's a good tribe name. <laughs> Oh yeah. That's okay. our next tribe name, Puddles Pixar and Pancakes. Pixar tribe name. <laughs> I'm making Puddles it right now. Pancakes. Puddles Too. and Pancakes. Too funny. That is now my tribe name on a <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> All right, Cyber, what do you got for us? All right, I'm not as um creative, I guess. <laughs> but Oh, it just um, takes some research. You, you you have time. But uh last year, um for the company I work with or for, um I, I I'm a developer, so uh, I uh, decided last year I wanted to do something for the company I work uh, for. It's a, a decent sized company, over 100 employees. Um, uh, so I took the web application that uh, everybody in the company pretty much uses. Um, and I had to come, so I spoke to my boss about it before I did this, and I, I had to come up with something that wouldn't prevent them, obviously, from doing their job with their right. customers, because customers coming in the door and stuff. We couldn't prevent them from doing their work. Exactly. So I had to come up with something creative that would still not interrupt their day to day. So I decided to basically take the code that I basically I build web applications that they use uh, to help bring up our customers' information and all that. And I decided to throw in some extra code so that when they first launched the program every morning, uh, it would flip their screen upside down. So oh the bottom gosh. was on the top and the top was on the bottom. And then after a few minutes, and I had to, again, get approval of how long it could stay upside down, it would just turn itself back. And there, there would be a little animation where it would turn back to the right way. And then a little pop-up message would come up just saying, uh, hap- uh, ha- happy April Fool's uh, Day from your IT department. So uh, that was a fun little thing that I did la- last year. It didn't take me long to throw in a little bit of HTML5 code onto the page <laughs> to make that happen. But that, that sounds is pretty funny. fun. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. Fun. But that is, it was see, awesome. That's something that, you know, people... That was like, creative. We don't, yeah, we don't know how to do that stuff, so we stick to cellophane on toilets. <laughs> oh, gosh. But there's a place. <laughs> Mine would that's be definitely awesome. a, le- a lot less messy. Yeah, definitely. But I could imagine the like what what was the reactions? Like what did they do or how did you tell them that it was you that did it? Because they got the message at the end, uh, happy April Fools Day from oh, your IT department. Good for they you. knew it was IT and I'm the I, at the time I was the only developer. So oh, they, 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 they knew it was they knew That's it was adorable. from me. That's so, so cute. That's it, cool. it was well accepted. Everybody Very thought it was tastefully a done. good way to do it. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Tasteful yep. and safe. Because when yep. you're at work too doing this stuff. No, it was it was it was perfect because you don't yeah, lose your like job for an April Fool's Day. <laughs> That's right. It's so true. Yeah. Awesome. All right, how about you, Mister Foe? Okay, so I have a couple, but one of which I may have said this before in the past. But since we're talking about April Fool's Day, this was my best April Fool's Day joke because it lasted the whole day. <laughs> so I had when I was in high school, I used to play hockey, uh-huh. and I was, and I had. The uh, goalie stuff. So all that stuff is very expensive. It's probably the most expensive equipment out of the whole hockey team. So um, a friend of mine, one night after playing hockey to like 4 o'clock in the morning, we used to play night games. Um, we're on the way home, and I'm like, dude, let's go drop my stuff in my house, and then I'll crash at your house, and then we'll head over to uh, school tomorrow morning. And he was like, oh, I don't feel like going to your house, dude. He's like, listen, just leave it in the car. And the next day, because we're going to play um, maybe later on that, that uh, afternoon, I was like, I don't want to leave my stuff in the car, dude, because there's expensive goalie equipment. You know what I'm saying? It's right. like, it'll be fine. No one's going to break into my car. So I'm in school. <laughs> who do I run into? His girlfriend, who has the keys to his car. 
So I'm like, listen, it's April Fools. We got to play a joke. So I talk her into giving me the keys. So I take the car to my house. I unload oh all gosh. the goalie equipment into my apartment. And then I drive the car back to school. And I park <laughs> it in the same spot. I lucked out and I got the same spot. So, and then that's that. I don't see him again until night school. And you could see on his face, he didn't know what to say to me. I was like, yo, dude. What's up? And he was like, oh, dude, I really got something to tell you. Um, I'm like, what? He's like, yo, someone broke into the car and they took all your goalie stuff. And I was like, see, this is what I told you. I didn't want to leave it in the car, blah, blah, blah. And he was like, I'm so sorry, blah, blah, blah. And he was apologizing. And it looked like he was going to cry, this poor kid. So I'm like, April Fool's, motherfucker. <laughs> and he's like, you son of a bitch. And he like walks away from me like all mad. And I'm like, come on, don't be a freaking baby, dude. It's April Fool's. That was an awesome joke. He's like, first of all, how'd you get my, how'd you get your stuff? I was like, I, he's like, your girlfriend had the keys. He's like, I can't believe she gave the keys to you. This is so messed up. I was betrayed by my best friend and my girlfriend on the <laughs> oh same day. God. I'm like, yo, <laughs> wow. now you oh are God. out of control. And then did he say April Fool's at the end? Like, I no, got you, fool. he didn't. But let me tell you what he did say. He's like, I'm mad because I got a police report. I called the cops. I had the cops come. We filled out all the paperwork. They're out looking for your stuff right now. I'm like, first of all, they're not looking for my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you think that's on their priority list, exactly. in New York, you have another thing coming. Exactly. They're not looking for my goalie equipment. I will guarantee you that. <laughs> but this joke just got 10 times better because you told me you called the cops. And you sat there and filled out a whole police report. That and... poor guy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Could, you imagine? Could you imagine being that guy and he's like, here I told that guy nothing like this would happen. Exactly. <laughs> he's like, you know, the whole day I'm sitting here saying I'm going to have to do overtime at Burger because he worked at a Wendy's. Wendy's. He's like, I have to do overtime at Wendy's. What how many burgers I would have to flip to pay for goalie equipment? Oh my goodness. Poor I'm like guy. a heck of a lot of burgers, I'm gonna tell you that much. Oh <laughs> that's man. hilarious. Yeah, that was funny. Oh my goodness. So that was my 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 good one. Then there was an uh, April Fool's that was on me. And funny. one day I was at a convention and I'm playing in a tournament for a game called War Machine. And this tournament had like 150 players in it. So we're in this big convention room, 150 players. I'm in like the center of the hall. It was like my first game. And my wife calls me. And she's like, oh, I got something to tell you. I'm like, what? She's like, oh, I'm pregnant. And I was like, <laughs> oh. Like, what? So now I pause my game. I, I, I'm looking at the other guy. The guy's like, are you ready? I'm like, no. Oh, hold my on a second. goodness. So then I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I was like, all right. So... You know, I didn't know what to say because we weren't planning on it, nothing. And then she goes, April Fools. And I realized it was April 1st. <laughs> and my, my, this is my reaction, okay? I yelled at the top of my lungs, you bitch, <laughs> just like that. Oh and God. the whole entire hall <laughs> went oh silent. Oh, my God. And like, because I really yelled it real loud. So oh picture you're goodness. in a gaming hall. There's a little right. bit of talk and banter. You know, everybody was playing that yeah. game. It was concentrating. And then just some dude just yells, you bitch. Just like <laughs> the top of my lungs. Oh, my goodness. And my opponent looked at me like, what I do? I'm like, no, no, it's not you. Yeah. <laughs> my insane wife just played one of the most horrible April Fool's joke. He oh, play my somebody. God. She just this had about... 45 different emotions go through my body yeah. in a matter of yeah. like three seconds. So I guess, I I'm guess from we, shocked to happy to say it. I don't know yeah. what I'm doing to just to yelling you bitch. Exactly. Yeah, that I mean, was I, the culmination of all those 45 emotions was just yelling you bitch. Exactly. <laughs> I guess the good thing is that it was at least your wife oh, that did it and not like a girlfriend. Goodness sakes. Very that true. That's so funny. Too crazy. I love what I named it in the uh, show notes. Prego my ego. Is my yeah. Story. <laughs> you never know when Foe adds the show notes. You never know what you're going to get. That is funny. Good one. How about you, Will? What do All you right, have for so, us? All right. So, um... Growing up, uh, you know, went to went to church. I still go to church, but anyway, point point being, um, uh, the church that I grew up in, I should say, 
um, for a while before I went to college, I were, I uh, helped run the lighting board. So, you know, we got a new building, installed all this nice equipment and stuff like that. And um, so we got a, a programmable lighting board to run the lights for the stage. And so I knew this thing inside and out. I had read the manual from cover to cover. I, I had helped, you know, program the lighting settings and all this kind of stuff. And so um, it was... I, I think it was April Fool's on the Sunday. It was a, either it was a Sunday or it was a Wednesday night, something like that. Um, but we were doing something really important. I think it was near Easter. And um, so I get in my head. I, I know about this feature that you can do that will lock the lighting board controls so that if you move the sliders or anything like that, it doesn't do anything. So I decide, okay, I'm going to go ahead and lock this stuff. Then I'm going to call the uh you know like the the production manager down and say look it's not working and, and, and you know just like mess with the <laughs> stuff <laughs> and so i did that and he's kind of freaking out he's like what's uh-huh. going on what's wrong and i was like I-, I just locked it it's okay <laughs> oh goodness sakes <laughs> that was what did so did you guys have to tell anyone else or did he was he the one that it was the biggest prank on yeah it was just it was just for him like because i was i was running the board that day uh-huh. and so uh, i was just like like it's oh not working i can't make a change light settings <laughs> of course i mean i i did this before uh, right before anything started so I, right. I didn't disrupt anything it was they're just like, great yeah so <laughs> and, and in their head they're like what is what are we gonna do yeah exactly <laughs> exactly the show must go on. Exactly. Good one. Yep. Good one. How about you, Cricket or Giga? Did you guys have anything to add before we move on? Um, I'm not really a prankster at all, so I really haven't ever uh, pulled Nobody's any April Fool's you either? Nothing that, that's memorable. The the biggest, uh, my family, they ourselves aren't real pranksters. Although the, the one, it wasn't April Fool's joke, but the one kind of prank that I do remember, though, is my my father did it on my, on my brother. He he was, uh, you know, there was uh, the doorway uh between the you know two rooms you know the, the hallway and the living room and my dad just kind of like you know peeked his head out the doorway and you know motioned with his with his hand you know his finger for my brother to, to come over to him you know like, like he wanted him to you know, come over there to show him something and right as my brother walked around there my dad in his other hand had a uh, a paper plate just filled with shaving cream and oh just my gosh. shoved it right in his face as he went through and it was just so <laughs> random because my my dad doesn't do stuff like that right and so it just came from you know. It was unexpected, you know, and he he was just you know doubled over, just laughing as anything, and it, it was it was funny that my brother found to try to get him back, and uh, he never really did. But uh. that, see, I could see where that would get you even more when you it comes from someone you don't even expect it from. Yep. That's true. Well, you know, that's really interesting because you run around in game whacking us with candy canes all the time. So it's really <laughs> interesting that you say you're not a prankster. But in game, you are a prankster. I'm a, that's not really a prank because it, it, it's, you know. It's, so what is it? Are you a bully yeah, would you or call are you it a prankster? Then? It, it's, I, I'm not fooling you, you know, with anything. It, it, it's something I'm just, you know, just kind of fooling. With you. When we see you coming up, but it's a crapshoot on whether or not we're going to make it through the interaction. So, I mean, you kind of are fooling us. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a jokester, not a prank. Jokester. Okay. Let's, let's say that. Okay. We'll do that then. I got one more, actually. Okay. It's funny. So, my mother used to have the typical big hairdo. Uh-huh. Big beehive hairdo. The big woman from Queens of Brooklyn hairdo. Uh-huh. And, uh, well, you're not wh- from New York, though. You're from, you know, you're from down south. Who, me? Yeah, because of your southern accent. Oh, yeah, it's so southern that <laughs> I have everybody fooled. <laughs> I, I, actually, I actually thought that you were, you know, a sibling of uh, Johnny Wrench. No. I'm actually Which, from. Where is he at, right? Where is I'm her from Johnny? Jamaica. I think, I think actually. his feelings I'm are from still Jamaica, hurt. actually. Oh. So, actually, anyway. Yeah, man. So, what I'd be doing, Mon, I took a, the, uh, no, so what I did was. <laughs> Your mama. All my accents winds up becoming, you know, Scar- Mamma Mia. Yeah. <laughs> Mamma like, Mia, I miss her. Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia. So, my accents are sounding like Bobbert. Um, so. <laughs> so, one night, my mother used to work a lot of nights. So, she would sleep in the day. And uh, me, my brother, and my sister snuck into her bedroom one day and we put cat bells in her hairdo. Of course, we had cats, assholes. and we took the bell <laughs> off the cat. Assholes. We took the bell off the cat collar, 
and we shoved it <gasps> in her big hair, right? You guys are rotten! So wait, so she gets up, and she's walking around, and she's like, you guys hear that? We're like, what? She's like, like, bells. Like, you don't hear the bells? Oh, sakes. She's like, I'm like, no, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, what are you talking about, bells? She's like, no, listen. And we're all quiet, and she won't move. So I'm like, she's like, standing like still, I'm like, so, so, she's like, oh, no, I don't hear it now. And then when she would walk, obviously, <laughs> she would hear it. <laughs> And she'd be like, right there, that's it. And I'm like, what? And then she would stop and pause. And it's like, everybody, shh, shh, shh. And we're all being quiet. And we're like, I don't hear nothing. She's like, all right, it's okay, it's not there. And then as soon as she would move again, she was like, no, it's right there again. It's there, it's there. And we we went on for like an hour, just letting her just think she is is going crazy, just hearing bells. And the worst thing about it is those cat bells are like a faint ringing. Yeah, it's it's a faint ringing, right. right. And it was like in her hair so probably even more faint you know Poor mama. So and she crazy. was like i don't know what it is i don't know i could hear it <laughs> and then she was like looking for the cat at one point i'm like what are you doing she's like oh i think God. it's the cat like the cat has a bell i'm like ma the cat is nowhere even near here like what are you talking about and eventually we eventually told her she was like so mad too funny but you know, so my you, mother was a big jokester too right so you, you, know, you, yeah so, so you, you talk about it, you guys learn from her you talk about cats and bells and that uh reminds me of one thing that my siblings did to our cat when uh at christmas time is you know they, they sold the uh the christmas bells on the uh the necklaces and we just and they decided that they were going to put it over my cat's neck and well she you know she cats of course don't like things going around their neck so she started back no, trying it. to trying to get it off of her and it, you know, and it followed her, you know, followed her movements. So then she just tore off, and now it got stuck, you know, be, you know, on her waist between you know, her sets of paws, and she was just tearing around the house everywhere because she was just so spooked. And I've never seen a beast, you know, move that quickly. And, <laughs> I mean, you could just, you know, you, you can just imagine the fear that was, you know, that was in her. By it. So we were trying to catch her in order to get the damn thing off, and <laughs> she just did not want any of it. But <laughs> crazy. How about you, Gago? What do you have? Nothing. nothing? Gosh, nope. you're such a boring little person to you. I don't Jeez. do I don't do April Fools the one day of the year. Don't do it. It's never done to you either? Nope. Crazy map. Boring, boring. Boring. Ooh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's okay. That like might your be own personal army. Such a yeah, I know, right? Such a salad, salad <laughs> answer. A side salad answer. Okay, then. I guess that means we are going to go into something that I can never find the damn music for. Oh, wait. No. Um, how about this? Where we talk for a very, very, very long time. <laughs> So, you were, where you might have left us hanging with your April Fool's giga, I know you're not going to leave us hanging with your Eve stories, so you're going to get us started, mister. Ugh. What have okay. you, yeah, cracking your knuckles, stretching, you got a tale to tell us, don't you? Alright, so, <laughs> I went on another big fleet roam with, uh, oh. with my corporation, we had about a hundred people, and it was the first big, like, fleet of battleships that we've really flown around in. And the way it was supposed to go down is we had a uh, arranged fight with another corporation that we were going to, uh, we were going to meet up and we were both going to fight and it was going to be kind of like a fair battle, Uh but somehow they couldn't get the numbers together, what we were told. So that got canceled. So we just decided to go roaming around looking for fights. Okay. So let me pull up the kill board. Actually, we killed a couple people for them because when I say we killed them, I mean, we like jumped on them oh okay we had the way we were doing it is we had scouts one jump ahead of us and as soon as they found somebody they would basically pin their ship down and then the rest of us would just jump on them wow okay so we did that for a while until we found another fleet of vindicator battleships which are not normal battleships but they're pirate faction battleships which are basically like they're in between the standard battleships and the Tech 2 specialized battleships. Uh huh. They're slightly stronger, slightly more specialized. But these were like bricks. Basically, each one was a flying tank. And to make matters worse, they had a ship called a Force Auxiliary with them, 
which is basically a capital-sized, dreadnought-sized healing ship. Oh my goodness, I didn't even know so, that was a thing, that they have yeah, healing we ships. Just, we just wow. ran head first into them, and we just started wow. just duking it out. And so I'm flying around, desperately calling for my own healing, so I've got some of our healers' drones on me, keeping my armor alive, and I'm just firing torpedoes left, right, and center against these massive battleships in my tiny little ship. Uh-huh. We lost. We lost hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I can I can imagine so. Uh, yeah, I mean we're going up against right about and there's no 20, way to know that right. Yeah, we're no going up against that. about twenty people in ships that are better than ours. They're stronger ships. Holy crap! And our fleet commander wasn't really. I don't want to say he wasn't good because it's not that he's not good, but I he tried a weird tactic. Like he was trying to push one of the battleships away from the healing. That way we could take it down. But oh. that uh, Force Auxiliary ship was just, there's no beating that. We should have uh, ignored them. It was like because... what we would call in World of Warcraft or, or any MMO that has, they're trying to like peel the peel them off. You know, yep. like you gotta, it was, yeah. It was bad. We got, we got whelped. Yeah. That probably may I have really worked if there wasn't bomber. so many beefed up things you were going up against. I like, mean, if it was one, if the Force probably. Auxiliary wasn't there, we probably might have been able to win. Uh huh. But it just it it by itself it could probably heal all the damage to one ship we were applying. Okay. Because that's the way like big fleet battles in Eve go. You'll call the fleet commander will call out a primary target and everybody will focus on it. Or like a squad commander will call out a ta primary target for your squad. Or that's the way they'll do it. Not like okay, everybody just start attacking the enemy. So that's sadly, crazy. I never got to fire any bombs. So if you look at the. Uh, Actual. No bombs and no wormholes destroyed. No bombs, no wormholes. But so how is your how is your time in Eve right now since you've been in charge of event creation and stuff? Have you got um, to actually create any events or I've been planning one and I've been working with a few other people and we're kinda like piecing it together. Uh-huh. My main problem is uh figuring out questions that fit for people that are brand new and then oh. questions that fit for people who actually might know more than me. Uh huh. So. Yeah, I can imagine that is kind of hard because I've done a lot of event stuff and games, and you you would feel that way. You would feel like yeah, you want to it's... at least know the maximum because, like, if you run like a competition, you, those people with more knowledge know loopholes like, that you can't even yeah. foresee. Yeah. Yep. I can understand your dilemma. So it's coming along, though. I'm getting there. I'll probably hold it in April, not in March. Okay. Hmm. Well, oh, it looks like we lost. Oh, he's back. Oh, is he go. back? Good. I don't have to stop. I'm back. Everybody relax. <laughs> I mean, we were pretty relaxed. Everybody chill out. I know like you guys were frantically just typing keys, honestly, making phone calls. Zero. Until you to get to retell back. old stories. <laughs> I heard you saying, I just rejoined. I heard it. <laughs> I know. That's all. I saw a flash on my other monitor. And I'm like, what's that? Oh, it's Foe. Foe, I didn't even know you were gone. But I'm back. <laughs> Welcome back. So that, yeah, I could see where that would be an issue because you, you kind of feel like you're excited to, to come up with new events, but then you also want to Yeah, I've got to include probably, people. Yeah, pick the brain of those who have more experience and also new people to kind of come together with something that you all can do. Yeah, that is, you'll, you'll get it. You'll figure it out. The key is, though, don't drop the ball because nobody likes promoting somebody to a position to have them just sit on their thumbs. Because that's also frustrating. So even if you fail, right. at least you tried, you know? So I'll do fine. Can you go Google some, like, past events or something or ideas and stuff like that? Yeah, just to kinda... they've got lists of past okay. events that they can help me out with. Well, good. Well, let us know what you come up with. I'll probably that have will video be cool. of it. That would be cool. Oh, yeah. Nice, man. So you've been listening to a new podcast? Yeah, it's more Eve-related stuff, but it's called uh, Hydrostatic Podcast, and they're basically, like, more of a lore than an actual, like, gameplay podcast. Uh-huh. So, like, if you want to know the lore of the different pirate factions or, like, the lore of the different empires in the game, it's a good podcast to listen to. They have, like, awesome. hours, hours long episodes, and then they have quick little segments about a certain faction that you can listen to that are, like, 11 minutes long. Oh, that's Andy. Like, even if you don't play Eve, but you're into, like, kind of, like, Star Wars-esque yeah. stuff like that, it's something fun to listen to. 
And even if you like it, it looks like it's fairly new too. They well, they have 21 episodes out right now. You can find it at hydrostaticeve.com. Is it fairly new or do they just not put out a lot of content? Uh, I, it looks like it's I think, fairly new. I can't tell. I just started listening to them. It, uh, looks like, really oh, it looks like they put out an episode a month. That's why it looks like they're fairly new. There's 21 episodes. Oh, so that's like two years wow. almost. I was going to say, month. yeah, they, uh, they've been around, I think, but they're just kind of slow about it. Yeah, probably because you said they're they're not like us so back when we were doing... Because like our listeners, I know we try to mention that we do a Rated Arc podcast, but we also did Rated Extras, and that's how Cross Realm Cast was born. And um, a lot of our podcasts would go that three-hour long stint. Yeah, they do so like So these guys panels. are like, no, we're going to do three hours once a month. <laughs> we were doing like three hours every freaking week, and then sometimes yeah. six hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, now I see they have been around for a while. They just keep it um, more conservative when it comes to how many a month they put out. So that's cool. It gives people want, a chance to catch uh, up. If you want a quick like gameplay one, I think Cap Stable is supposed to be pretty good. But okay. they're more of a uh, they're like really close to like what Rated Arc is about Arc, but for Eve. Oh, okay, that's cool. That not with like a gaming group or anything. It's like the same three guys. All right. So we do have the links to that in the in the show notes. Oh, I love it when people put in my links for me. I did it for you. Show notes. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> While you guys talk, I go through. Uh, if I could see something, I try to link it for you guys. Awesome. A so work for me. What do you have for us, Mr. Giga? Oh, uh, just I've started watching an anime called Darling and the Friends today. Not bad. It's like really. How'd you come across that? How'd you find that? I've seen like jokes about it and stuff online and i Ooh. was like i'm downloading rainbow six siege i bought that today so i'm downloading that and i was like eh, screw it i'll watch this while i wait this looks interesting yeah it's like i mean it's trigger in a1 so you know the quality is probably going to be pretty good i'm trying to sum up the plot of the first four episodes i've seen it's like freaking okay first of all it's got like weird sexual symbolism a little oh. bit mm. like it's a boy, it's like boy and girl pairs piloting a mech suit, right? Together. Uh huh. And the girl Hot. is like bent over in front Hot. of the guy, and it's kind of weird. Oh Hot. gosh. It's like they're, like they're like three feet apart. It's not like they're Hot. grinding up on each other. They're like three feet God. apart, but it's still like it's there. It's like the horse suit at a birthday, you know, somebody it's has to weird. It's like, it's weird. <laughs> like it's not something I'd watch on my like living room TV. Right. But yeah. it's not it's like, like fucking pop. smut. Yeah, it's not smut, <laughs> but it's also got like some weird Hot. moments. Oh god! Hot. I don't necessarily want my dad to see me watching or my little brother. Hot. <laughs> well, I think if your dad sees you watching, I'll probably just assume anything animated in Japanese Hot. is going to be hentai or something. He, he's already at that point. No, he'll just be like hot. <laughs> just be like, where's the when the tentacle? When are the tentacles gonna come out? Hey, Esme, oh can my you, god! Can you? Uh, Clip that out. What Foe's been saying, just like one, Hot. one instance no, I of that. Can't. Hot. Can't there. <laughs> well, there you go. That was a nice one where nobody was saying anything. I think that's why I was laughing. Hot. Okay. Someone put Foe in the corner. <laughs> so stick him in the corner. Um. Yeah. That's. I've not watched any anime, and it's I feel like it's something bad, that though. I don't know where to. It's not an anime, but it is. But it's not. Mm. Well, what? What? I, I'm. Yeah, I'm not sure that's I what mean, Giga was saying. There's some that are, I don't know, like Dragon Ball Z. I don't even consider that an anime anymore. But this is considered an anime, though, right? But it's science this fiction. Is, this is hardcore. It has a dub faster than I thought it would, though, so you could watch it in English. I'm so confused right now. <laughs> if I mean, I don't know. If you like mech suits fighting giant monsters, it's worth looking at. Oh, okay. Lots of kids dying. Hot. <laughs> hot. <laughs> Lots of children deaths. You can't beat it. You might as well join in with Electron. You stumped me with that one. I'm not going to say hot after that. Hot. <laughs> Gosh. Oh uh, good, good, uh, good, uh, good choice gonna, there, Foe. We're going to hand it over to Mr. Cyber. Although I know how, how much it would bother Will, so I hot. might do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with you, Mr. Cyber? All right, now that my section's done, I can play Rust. There you go. I saw you were into Rust. Why did you? <laughs> oh, Rust. Yeah, oh, all my friends Rust now, started too. playing Rust. Let me see. Let's just. No, no. I really need. I feel like. I feel like we need to have a talk. That's you a toxic really... game. I feel like toxic we, no... is like Rust is like I the was... epitome of toxic. I was not really yeah, thinking in that direction. Toxic. I was thinking like 
you like you and your gaming right now because we're friends on Steam. I'm like, oh, Giga's, <laughs> cheat, Giga's cheating on uh, old Eve over there. Poor it's Eve. like, oh. Uh... And what's then he, like, like, he's in, what's like, he living in, in 2005? She was on freaking Honey Pop, like five different games listening. It's like, like what's, he, what's he back in 2010? Because that's when all those games he's playing came out. <laughs> no. I mean, look, Far Cry 2 is a great game. Yeah, it was <laughs> I like, to explain I was like, myself man. to you. Because, uh, yeah, I want to play Far Cry 5. Talking it about was a new $3, game. man. <laughs> You're telling oh, wow, me I gave it $3? Sure. <laughs> so anyways, though, I was like, oh, no. Because we were picking his, um, he was like, Eve, 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 because you like went hardcore for like, what, like a month? Was it well, a month or so? Well, I have things to do. I'm out yeah. of things to do at the moment. I don't, I'm, to give you an idea, I've run out of money to blow. So oh, I'm at the point okay. where I don't want to spend what little cash I have left on just goofing off. Oh, In okay. case I need to replace a ship that I actually like need. So I've kind of had to slow down a little bit in my suicide missions. So do you like, feel I haven't like... even replaced my stealth bomber yet. So what are you doing right now in game that like cuz is this like a plateau that everybody experiences or no? Um not really. It's for me it's more I'm training, I'm still doing the skills I need to have my source of income. Uh-huh. But once you find your source of income and you consistently do it well, you can do whatever you want basically. And you're just trying your to still find your net, your niche or your niche About trying to... 2 days and I'll be able to uh and two days and I'll be able to make as much money as I want. What does that mean? It means that I'll be able to, uh... Like, I what found, happens uh, to you in two days? You hit, like, Eve puberty or something? Like, No, in two days I'll have the required skills to competently fly the battleship that I have already purchased. Okay. All right. Because it's like, I, it's, it'd be like trying to go into a raid in World of Warcraft under-skilled. Uh -huh. Or undergeared. Yeah, undergeared would be better. It's yeah. Possible, but you're really not gonna succeed. Right. It should be a waste of time. Then you have all these repairs to do and a bunch yeah. of weirdness. So like why even bother? Just wait your time. So yeah. uh, so you've been cheating on Eve with Rust and Honey Pop and Civ Five <sighs> and, and Far Cry Two. Far and Cry Rainbow. Two. And what did you say, Repo? Rainbow. Rainbow. I was like, it's almost like Repo? I'm playing. It's almost like I'm playing some of the other games I own. Right. I see. That's not bad. You. They just sit in your. Steam I'm not going back library. to Ark though, for a while. Huh? Every time I feel like playing Ark, I remember how long it'd take to load into uh, Faloon's server, and I'm just like, eh, oh. <laughs> I can go play this now. It takes. It doesn't take that long for me to load in the the mods on Faloon's. It takes forever to load into Prim Plus. Oh yeah, and that's now we're, why like, I totally haven't gotten on there now. Like while we're playing Pix Ark. Which we'll talk about later. My god, it's just like, why have I been waiting all this time to log in? The it takes like a minute book? and a half to get in. I know, it takes like a minute and a half. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I can't <laughs> wait to talk about Pixar. Oh, so crazy. All right, so we'll just hand it over to Cybert, let him talk. So, all right, there you go, mister. All right. <laughs> um, so, if you guys recall last time I was on this show, I was talking about how I was wanting to find a MMO, and I had mentioned that. I was looking at Elder Scrolls Online, but they didn't have a trial out at the time, and I wasn't sure what it was like, and wanted to kind of try it before I bought it to see what I thought of it. So um, I ended up uh, get, they ended up this weekend, uh, starting Thursday, having a five day uh, trial for Elder Scrolls Online because of uh, a new expansion that they're releasing. So uh, I saw that, took advantage of it right away, and uh, started playing. I guess Friday night. Uh, I started playing the Elder Scrolls Online. Uh, by Sunday, I determined that I liked it enough that it was worth uh, purchasing. Uh, they had it on sale for like $23 for the base game and the first expansion, Mormon. Oh, cool. Uh, so, and that's Canadian dollars, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. So, I... Uh, I and then I, I went on to actually... Um, it used to be... Uh, one of the bundle stars, I believe it was called, and they've renamed themselves to Fanatical. And I went on yeah. there and I saw that they had the game on, or the pre-order of the new expansion pack, which is called uh, Somerset. Uh -huh. uh, they had that listed pre-order, $45.46 Canadian. And I'm like, oh, that's sweet. And you get the base game, and for a limited time, you also get the Morrowind expansion included in that. 
I'm like, uh, oh sweet, I'll, I'll instead of buying the twenty four dollar game and only getting Morwin in the base game, I'll pre order Somerset, get the base game in Morwin, and then when uh, Somerset comes out, I'll also get that. So I did the pre-order, and uh, for whatever reason, uh, Fanatical didn't give me a keys to get uh, the base game and more wins. So I emailed their support, and they're like, oh yeah, you'll get them when uh, uh, when the Somerset expansion comes out. And I'm like, what? Oh. <laughs> I'm like, well, it says on your site that uh, um, I, I get to play those right away, and they basically said that I had to wait, so I, to- I-, I got a refund. They're like, uh, what are so- you talking about? No, no, it's not out yet. No, Somerset is not, but they said that I, uh, they said the base game and more when I'd get right away to start playing and then I'd get the Somerset key when it came out in June. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Right. So, but I didn't get, so I didn't get the base game or more when, so I would have basically. That's ridiculous. Tri- yeah. So after the trial was uh, done, I would have had to wait till June to play everything. So what I, the heck? I, I, I said, give me, so stupid? I, I said, give me a refund. Uh, I'll, I'll figure out another method. So, uh, they, they refunded it and then I just went and bought the. Uh, base game and uh, Morrowind uh, on sale through Steam. Um, I didn't end up doing the pre-order because on Steam they wanted fifty-three dollars instead of forty-five. So yeah. I was like, I'll just wait, and I'm sure the the after a few months of uh, the expansion being out, it'll it'll be on sale, and I'll be able to get pick it up for cheap. So right, yeah, because uh, Morrowind I, didn't come out too terribly. Not not the game, but the expansion for Morrowind didn't come out too terribly long ago. So. Yeah, I guess it's an annual thing. They said this is their second annual expansion. Gotcha. So, yep. uh, so I guess the one, they're planning on putting out expansions once a year for the game. But uh, it's pr- been pretty cool. I've been uh, just kind of playing it like a solo game, just going through the story mi- storylines and doing the missions. It seems like it's all voice acted. All the missions are voice acting uh, acted out, um, which I kind of like. Um, I've done a little bit of, cra- started doing a little bit of crafting. That seems a little bit more... Uh, complex because you have to when you get gear that has um, certain skills on it like uh, certain bonuses or whatever you have to basically when you're done using it you can deconstruct it to learn those things so that when you're doing your crafting you can then add those bonuses to the armor that you're crafting uh, or whatever you're crafting and uh, each new like so uh, they have like oh probably a a dozen or so different skills that you can learn to add on to your equipment and uh, to unlock like the first one to unlock it takes six hours uh, b- before it unlocks and then the next one I guess the time increases uh, so I was watching a YouTube video and by the time to get all of them unlocked it takes basically over a month uh, to, to unlock the last one I thought that was a little interesting and crazy but um, it, sure <laughs> uh, it seems uh, interesting that way but I'm playing right now uh, a Dark Elf uh, Nightblade. So they're kind of like your rogue style. Um, it, it is a little bit different. It was weird when I start, like when they start you off in the tutorial, they had me pick up um, a, basically a two handed sword, which I thought was weird for a rogue style. But uh, ran around with that for a while. And then uh, eventually I was able to pick up some daggers. And now I'm running around with daggers because that's the way I prefer to run so uh-huh. um, but you have your 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 left click does attacks um, if you hold the left click it does a stronger attack uh, you have your right click which blocks um, you can do dodges or evades by double tapping your uh, directional keys um, if you hit both the left and right right mouse button together it interrupts like a spell caster or what have you if you're up next to them uh, but then they, you have your skill keys, like one, your one to whatever, and they do skills. And uh, it was e- interesting uh, for my uh, character. The skills don't seem to go along with the uh, weapons I was carrying. Like at one point when I first started, I had uh, just what was dropped uh, that was better than the two-handed sword that I had. So I had like a, a mace and an axe in my hands. And the animation looked like I was using daggers for my skills. So I, I, I thought that was interesting and weird. But That's odd. Uh, yeah, but I'm enjoying it. I, I think it's, it's fun. I, li- I like the storyline. Um, and I, I figure for 24 bucks what I paid for it. And it's going to give me uh, a decent amount of entertainment for that price. So that's uh, basically uh, 
all I have for you. So I know I asked in Discord who if anybody was playing, and some people said they used to, but they haven't. I know it's an older game, but uh, yeah, if anybody is playing, you can look me up. I'm uh, going with the name Cyber Judge in games. So awesome. So you've really kind of, it sounds like if, because you're very particular about <laughs> what you purchase and stuff, and a lot of us have to be, you know, so yep. this is definitely something that really you've really gravitated towards, right? Yeah, well, uh, first I, I was able to get the uh, wife acceptance for me to spend the money on it, so she said, yeah. I don't care. So. so what did you have to do, okay? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> I just got lucky, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> you got to mail things to work, like, like I, I do. Like, what did you? You, you got to mail things to work, to work, like I do. <laughs> they say it's easier to apologize than to ask. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's I, what happens just... with me. I swear to God, like it goes both ways. It's exa I know exactly yeah. how you feel. <laughs> So, She's like, like my what? What is this? Steam? Blah blah blah. I'm like, mm, that's what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> you want to eat for the rest of the week? You let me buy my fucking game. Like that's how that is. <laughs> so, I feel like yeah, it's yeah. a little bit different when when it's the 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 woman in the relationship who also no, wants to play goes, the game. Honestly, goes both ways, me. No, I just it, mean as far as you stories. being able to withhold food. Yeah, well, that's only because he he's like because he can't do what I do when it comes to cooking. <laughs> you know, he can do the basics, but that only lasts so long. <laughs> There's only so many you eggs have, you could eat I in know, a week. You have to have collateral, no matter what gender you are. If you have like I like PBJ, but after yeah. a while, it gets exactly. kind of. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. And also I could say you have to bank. Like you keep tabs on what they do, you know? Oh, like yeah. if they eat out or they buy their special fancy coffees, you add that shit up and you'd be like, hmm, <laughs> you spend ninety two dollars on freaking frappes. <laughs> I'm yeah. getting me what I want and you can suck it. <laughs> like that <laughs> maybe not that. You gotta put a little little lubrication on. But you know what I mean? Like because it has to be even. You you can't just let somebody run the show. But yeah, she, she, she's holding. I'm sure because she's gonna, uh, she's gonna go for something big once yes. the time is right. So she's so. banking. She does. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. she's sitting I'm back sure and watch is. it. Hell yeah. Well, and then, I wish I my feels. girl like bank stuff because I feel like she just don't bank anything. It's just <laughs> <laughs> whatever it is, it's coming. So <laughs> I sit back. And There's like, no <laughs> banking involved. I'll tell you no that right banking. Now. See me? I'm like hmm. That's like, yeah, it, it's it's all a give and a take. Well, at least it should be. I can't always say that yeah. it always is. It's just circumstantial. But yeah. I can never well, say nothing you. because my hobbies are so expensive. So I can never really, yeah. you know, I always yeah. have the underhand in that one. <laughs> yeah, so. yep. That's how it is with my husband. His, his hobbies are very, is a lot more expensive than mine ever could be. So even with gaming, because he's the outdoorsman, fishing and hunting and mm. You want to get a new bow? It's like eight hundred bucks. You know what I mean? I'm like, mm, no, I got the expensive crazy. hobby in my family with computers and building computers. Like I'm oh, saving okay. like two desktops here and everything. So, um, yeah, no, I've I've got the expensive hobby. My wife um, doesn't have anything that she spends a lot of money on. So, and uh, that's she... why it's hard to understand. You know, I under yeah. I, I can get where the lines can get a little blurred. Yeah, she's saving. She wants to save her money for a Disney trip, and yeah, let me yeah. tell you. Disney right. trips are ridiculous right now. The they prices really that Disney are. is charging, it's yeah. going to cost my family a five, eight thousand dollars to go. For I'll be two honest. Weeks yeah. to Disney. <laughs> well, that's a long time. Two weeks is a long time in Disney. Yeah, two weeks is a while. Two yeah, weeks? Yeah. Are you Fourteen days. Who? Yep. What? Who does that? I've never heard of someone saying. <laughs> I'm all Disney now. Days. After like three days, I'm all Disney. I know. Now. I'm like that. When you would come back, you would need to go into therapy. I would think. <laughs> honestly, <laughs> honestly, I think I Disney. think if you. If you go for two weeks, though, that makes that gives you a little more time. A little, to, a little. It, no, well, way, a little more time it, to not have to try to rush through anything, so it yeah. might not be quite two, the same. I don't know that I can you, you honestly. Get, you ever... get some resort resort days that oh, way. So we we've done yeah. it. Jesus, when my, I don't when think my I could daughter, do it. <laughs> when my daughter was yeah. four, we went to, for twelve days. So we uh, you only get a ten day uh, pass. So you get ten days access to the park, Gosh, and then your extra crazy. days are kind of so that you can go to their downtown Disney. Uh, I'll be honest. You can, you can go I don't to think I wouldn't time even, and stuff like that. I wouldn't even go to Disney, but they did do that Harry Potter thing. So uh, that's actually, universal. No, that's universal. universal. So yeah. really, I have no, I have no reason to go to Disney anymore. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of uh, Disney. Let me tell Marvel you why. Stuff. 
I agree. They got the Marvel stuff. That's cool. But let me tell you what, Star Wars. what annoys uh, me yeah. about Disney. I do have to go one day for the Star Wars stuff because I'm a huge Star Wars guy. But and they here's got the, what uh... I hate about Disney. <laughs> Disney, first of all, is always overcrowded. <laughs> That's for one. Yeah. That's an understatement. Go in two, the winter. No, okay. Two, two, they don't do the uh, the pass hopper thing properly. Like if I pay uh, extra money, hopper. yeah, if I pay extra money to like skip ahead in line, it's like they don't do it correctly. They do it where you have to still go and make appointments to get online. That's a bummer. And then also, like just to go and hug a character, you have to like make an appointment to see characters. Are you serious? That's retarded. It's yes. true. When uh, I was a kid, it wasn't like that. When well, I was a kid, the characters were all over the place. It, yeah, the, the characters used to be all over the park, but now they're not all over the park like they used to be, and you have to like book appointments to go and see them. Wow. It's just, I don't know. I just, there's a, like a lot of bummers that I don't like. It's still a, fa- a fantastic, if you've never been there ever, it's still a great place to go. It's, I haven't. It's honestly, a magical but... place. It is. It's it's magical. I cannot and, imagine staying anywhere for two weeks, though. That blows my mind. But like, I've did it. I've done it. And I don't want to do it again. Time. I mean, if I would go down there for two weeks, I wouldn't just do Disney. I would do exactly Disney and, and Universal. Up. Yeah. Universal is you know, my favorite. I like so Universal. We actually just did Universal uh, last summer, and it was. Do you a get ball. like a lot of passes, Cyber? Like, if you're, because it seems like eating there would cost way. Like, it would be ridiculous. Like, so that eight thousand dollar price tag included their dining plan. So, okay, thank you. Because I'm yeah. like, I felt sorry for you immediately. I'm like. A holy, that's crazy. Like feeding a family for two weeks on top of your vacation. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So I could have wrapped no, my mind around this concept. <laughs> like, the no. $8,000 And the, the alcohol thing. that what I would need to spend in Disney. <laughs> but where are you staying? Are you weeks? staying at the Disney Resort? That would be staying on resort, oh my God. yeah. Oh, okay. See, that's that's what's kind of making it a little bit more pricey, too. When I, I usually go, I stay off site. For two weeks, like my kids would have to live two weeks on leashes. Like those little, like, hey, I don't really have my kid on a leash. It's a cute backpack with a string, but they're still wearing a freaking leash. Like that's how it's yes. a leash. That's a leash. We would all be leashed, the backpack is just a harness. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh my god, we'd have I'll like be- leash and dents, backpack and dents in our bodies for wearing back. Oh my goodness. I'll be honest. Uh, when I went. Uh, it's been let's see my daughter just turned 10 which she was four when we went so six years ago uh-huh. i enjoyed it we went for we were there for 12 days i did enjoy it okay and so you've already it done it so you know what you're getting it didn't into. feel over like it was too much time because don't forget there's it's not just magic kingdom there's epcot um hollywood studios and um, i haven't Animal been there kingdom. in a bit but i feel like epcot so. it just feels old like when you go into epcot it feels like I just walked into the 1970s. But, so, I, so <laughs> I mean, it's it is fun, but it's, 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 not, for sure. it's not really so much kid. Uh, I mean, you know, it's nice to go through the people mover, but most of Epcot is, you know, you go through, you get to, you know, you get to, you know, kind of like, not quite museums, but kind of cultural museums. And yeah. like the you know, Japanese restaurant, uh, they regularly have the, the, guy, the, the uh, guys putting on the, the, the big drum show, like, you know, you saw at, uh, was in Die Hard with the, the huge drums and playing on that. Um, so you, you get a taste of some other cultures in there because they have all the different countries. And if you want, you know, if you want drink, if you want food, they have great restaurants of different uh, of the different uh, countries uh, and lots of different bars and pubs in there and restaurants. So that's what Epcot's nice for. And they have Soren. That's a uh, awesome ride. The Soren ride where you're on the hand glider and it feels like you're actually flying over when i was there it was just flying over california so so you'd fly over the orange groves and they would have like a citrus smell in the air so it smelled like you were actually flying over oranges and uh it was really cool now they've apparently changed it to soaring over the world so it doesn't just stick in california but uh, i forget is epcot the one that also has the uh crash test dummies and space mountain Uh, right the the race Uh, the the racetrack one the racetrack yep and it has space mountain too the magic kingdom yeah, no, you're thinking of the Mars, uh, the one where you travel to Mars, and it feels like Oh, the travel like to Mars one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I forget what they call it, but they yeah, have that one as that well. One was, that was pretty cool, but you could definitely get motion sick with that. Um, yeah. They, they, I know when we went to uh, Disney, which was a couple years ago, they had the like the thing where you kind of create your own roller coaster, and then you could go through the simulation of it. I don't know if they still have that. It was in one of the lab areas. 
where you know you had different different tracks that you could create, and then they had one of those virtual rider sim things like they have in the malls, and you sit in there. And oh, that's kind of cool. It pretends that yeah, you know, that's it's, cool. It's like a VR going through it with you know, complete with motion. That when we cool. go, we save a little bit of money because I have like I know people out there and I have family, so I don't have to pay for the hotel portion normally. Which yeah, saves we, off a lot it. of money from it. Yeah. Although then you, you know, then you have to you know get to get a rental car and drive down there and worry about the yeah, parking. Not, Whereas if you're on a resort, you just use their uh, you know use we their Uber bus system, which is really good. We just Uber, Uber over there. My big Take issue is how much they how they've gone to like it, when we went uh, six years ago. It cost there was four adults, so my mother-in-law and stepfather-in-law who live in California met us in Florida. Uh, we came from Canada, my, my wife and I and my daughter. So there's four adults and one child. We went for, it was 4,500. Um, and we stayed for 12 days. Uh, but how many years ago dining, was that? The, 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 it was six years ago. But we had the dining plan included for free. Um, we, we had the 10 days tickets, plus we stayed at the Riverside Resort. So, um, And it was the Food and Wine Festival going on at the time we went. Uh, this year... When I priced it out, it was going to be eight thousand dollars. In order to get the dining plan for free, uh, you basically had to do all this other stuff, which basically all these other things that you had to add on to it basically was the same price as the dining plan. So it wasn't worth getting the dining plan for free, and it was just that price increase. And now it was for two adults and, th- and three children. One of the children was uh, at the time under two, which would have meant they were free. So really, it was two adults, two children, and it was costing us pretty much double what it cost us six years ago uh, for basically the same trip. Um, and just the changes that they made to make things basically that you have to spend more money on different things to, to do different things, I thought it's just not worth it anymore to go there. <laughs> Anyways, I, I'm going to get us back on track. Um, that was my uh, little rant on Disney. I wasn't planning on going there, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> rant over. <laughs> Um, I'll, I'll move actually before I uh, move on to things I've been watching I, I only mentioned the one game Elder Scrolls Online because that's all I have been playing this week past week and then the week before I sliced open my finger and wasn't able to play any games because I had to get stitches and it hurt to even move my one finger so um, but one thing I mentioned it in discord so I think many of you took advantage of this but um, if you are an Amazon Prime uh, or Twitch Prime, so Amazon Prime users also get the Twitch Prime by default. You just have to link your Amazon account to your Twitch account. I believe it's vice versa. If you're paying for Twitch Prime, I believe you get Amazon Prime, but I could be wrong. Uh, anyways, I was Amazon Prime. I linked my, my Twitch account to my Amazon. I've now got Twitch Prime. Uh, it gives you the $5 a month uh, for donating uh to one of your streamers if you wish um and uh also they and they used to give perks in games so you could get bonuses like uh like crate loot crates and stuff that you would uh, normally have to buy in in games like hearthstone and um uh, overwatch overwatch and they got a, a whole bunch they're now also including full games for free um so basically when you go to uh, twitch.tv um, if you are a Prime member on the top right beside the login and sign up buttons there's a little crown icon you just click that and uh, it'll show you everything uh, that you have uh, the games right now that you can get for free are Shadow Tactics um, I'm just scrolling through them here um, Tomb of Annihilation which is a D&D uh, game I I uh, wasn't a big fan of it, but it's free, so you might as well pick it up. Mr. Shifty, uh, Super Hot, and Oxen Free. Uh, oh, and uh, Devil May Cry. So those are all free right now if you have Twitch Prime. So you just have to click on the crown and then just uh, click on them to get them. So uh, I, th- I thought that was kind of cool when I found out about that, and I'll pass it along to anybody listening. If you have your uh, Twitch Prime, definitely take advantage of those free games. I saw that too. I, think... I downloaded all those games. What? There were a bunch of games I've I never heard of up. before, but I was like, they're free. <laughs> Devil's May Cry is good. I like that too. Is, is that the first Devil May Cry or is it like the remaster? It's the uh, one? HD collection for the first three, actually. Okay. Nice. Yeah, so uh, I, I grabbed them all, all the keys, but I haven't installed or played any of them. But I tend to do that a lot. I noticed like uh, 
uh, Humble Bundle is giving some free games out too. So uh, anytime I see free games, I pick them up, even if I don't plan on playing them at all. So exactly, yeah. So use yeah, them it, for to go. Hey, hun, look, I've also got all these free games I've been actively searching for. <laughs> they don't cost me anything. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> try that. <No. laughs> but what I'm I think, I think there is a, I think there is a, there is a free art game. It's called Arc.io. Oh really? <laughs> um, I have, I no, I doubt. I think he's being facetious. Oh, no, <laughs> okay. That, no, that's what the art com's about. <laughs> what? The art com in Switzerland. Oh, oh, the one in Switzerland. Yeah, yeah. The one is back to like a couple weeks the ago. The one that only we know about. But no, <laughs> nobody <laughs> knows this joke, cricket. Nobody knows this joke. <laughs> if oh, the, I if do. they follow the crossover rebellion, they would know the joke. Yeah. <laughs> If they listen to Rated Arc, they would know. Yeah, because I think that's a I think that was an episode one Rated Arc joke. Yeah, oh. one of us. So Anyways, silly. Uh so yeah, so that I didn't have that in the show notes. I'll I'll type it in later, but uh uh that, that Twitch thing wanted to throw that in. Um but to get back on track, uh, uh just throw out a couple things that I've been watching. One of them is on YouTube. I don't know what's gotten into me, but uh, I used to say uh, not understand why people sat and watched people playing games and what have you on YouTube, and now I've just got suckered right into it, or sucked right into it. Um, I started, I believe, back in the summer months when we did uh, the old Rated Extra show, one of the first one, ones that I recorded with you guys. I uh, talked about how I was uh, watching um, a D&D uh, uh, um, recording on on the D&D channel that where it was uh, dungeon mastered by Matthew Mercer, who is a voice actor. And he had a whole bunch of other famous actors, uh, that, uh, oh, yeah, were, I remember. were with him. So I, I finished watching all his, their, those episodes on, on D&D and, uh, I don't even know if they've returned. I haven't gone back to look at the Twitch D&D channel, but, uh, I wanted to see what else Matthew Mercer was up to. So I went and searched and I guess he's involved in a YouTube channel called um, Geek and Sundry. And he has, now they're in their second season, but I'm just watching their first season. Uh, I watch a lot of that channel. I watch I the, uh, the board game plays. Okay. With so I'm, Will watching Wheaton. Their, I'm watching their Critical Role, which is um, basically Matthew Mercer is DMing a, uh, a D&D campaign uh, with a bunch of, there's actually... Uh, eight voice actors um, that play with it with them. Uh, all the um, sponsorships that they get through the because it was originally Twitch live stream and then they moved it to YouTube for archive purposes. Um, so like the, every week they're saying if if they get uh, X number of uh, uh, donations or whatever through Twitch, um, uh, all the money that they got donated went to a charity. Um, and, uh, so they, they would summarize everything like they were getting huge money for it, but, and, and it was all going for charity. I thought that was kind of cool. Uh, um, but, uh, they, uh, I've been watching them basically play a D and D campaign and it's obviously because they're all voice actors. It's, uh, and I just think that'd be so cool. Yeah. It, it's pretty yeah, cool. Definitely. It's, definitely. It's worth it. Like Matthew Mercer's, uh, gets into character for every one of the NPCs that the, uh, group meets and then the, yeah it's it's been keeping me pretty interested i'm uh, almost at the end of the first season watching their uh their uh first season and they they're right now recording their second season um so it's, it's pretty cool if yeah uh, you want to watch uh, a D D campaign being played out maybe you're interested in D D. haven't gotten to join uh foe's uh D D session uh that we run every other saturday but uh you want to see what D D is all about this is a good one to it's more made for TV type thing where it's probably very edited and uh, um, very scripted, a lot more scripted than uh, just any Joe Blow playing. <laughs> but right. uh, it, it would definitely, it's what sparked my interest watching the, watching the professional actors playing uh, really got me like, Oh man, wouldn't it be great if I could be that good at D and D. So yeah, yeah. this makes perfect. Yeah, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, the last campaign that I was in the, the DM, he, you know, he was great at doing voices on grand. You know, he wasn't, you know, a professional getting paid for this stuff, but it just makes so much, you know, so much of a difference, you know, for the immersion and all that, because, you know, uh, with, with his that campaign, it was regular that new, uh, some of the characters would teleport in 
just because of the the rules of the universe. Mm-hmm. So you know he wouldn't even have to say you know he wouldn't have to say oh you see you know you know character X he would just you know teleport in and he would just start talking and we'd immediately know which character it was. Right. And also with that it would it would give us you know there were certain characters that we just loved or hated and so we'd hear that voice and we'd be like oh shit really <laughs> that person I don't want to deal with you today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But it, 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 yeah, it just is so cool when you when you get the the voices and stuff in there. Mm-hmm. So I think that would be awesome to yeah. have so professionals. In the show notes, I have linked to the actual playlist for the Critical Role season one on Geek and Sundry, uh, so you can grab that. Um, I've also linked to Matthew Mercer's uh, IMDb. No, what did I link it to? I think it's the Wikipedia his Wikipedia page, so you can find out if that name sounds familiar or whatever. He's been in some. Uh, he's done some voice acting for some pretty uh, big things. So, what, what's his biggest one? You... Oh, let me go I, into I know it. I've heard the name. I would have thought you would have, might have had that on the tip of yeah. your tongue. No, I don't have it on the tip of my tongue. I've I I, I was going to actually put it in. So let's see. Uh, but no, I've heard that name before. So he's uh, 2017 Marvel Spider-Man. He played Alexi Sistevin Rhino, basically. Uh, uh, he uh, he did the voice for that. Uh, let's see. Uh, who did? Uh, this Mike is... Mercer. Oh, oh, oh wait, he, oh, he's okay. an, he's an Mercer. Overwatch. That, that's where I know him from. He plays McCree in Overwatch. Ah, okay. that that's why I recognize sense. him. Yeah. Recognize okay, him. there you go. So yeah, he's got he's got quite a big list. He's uh, looks like he was in Resident Evil, Vendetta, so Iron Man, Justice League. So yeah, he's got he's got a pretty good portfolio. Looking at his list here, lots it's of video hard, games. Dude. Yeah. So, anyways, yeah. So he's he's entertaining, and uh, his whole cast is. He's got uh, uh, one of the ladies from uh, Blind Spot, uh, the blonde girl that uh, uh, is in Blind Spot. If you guys seen the TV show Blind Spot, uh, she's that actor is one of the ones playing. So, oh nice. What? I freaking love that show. What <laughs> Hot. Which one was that? The, the techie gal? The chick, yeah. The tech chick? Yep. Yeah. Oh, so cool. Now yeah. we're going to have Hot. Kermit in. Hot. Oh, gosh. Hot. Here we go again. <laughs> Hot. So, yeah, yeah, she is, pl- she is playing. She plays I love her. Cleric. I've always loved her in all the stuff she's done, and especially well, the blind spot. On that just, YouTube. Such a sweetheart. On, yeah. that tu- on that same YouTube, Will Wheaton um, hosts a... Uh, show where he plays uh, board games and all those people that you mentioned join him and they play like all That's types so of cool. board games and you just yeah, watch okay. it it's super cool and, and, so and, and, while you know, i paint i'll put it on and i'll watch them so play cool. a board game and if you want to learn how to play one it's the perfect time to watch because you get entertained by right. them and they show you how to play the game yeah yeah, because so, yeah, that's what I was gonna say. They usually show you how to play the game, and you know, usually will really cool. You know, he'll usually have played the game once or twice before, so he usually yeah. has an advantage, and he gets pissy when he loses. It's funny. I can't believe that dude is in his forties. <laughs> He's like forty-five. I was shocked when oh. I found out his age. Um, my mom didn't even know Will Wheaton was a real person. She thought he was just a character that played on Big Bang Theory. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's no! funny. She's like, yeah, he, he's a freaking real person. He's he plays himself Bang Bang like most of the time. He plays yeah. himself on Big Bang Theory. Did you guys have like, watched, did you guys have watched The Guild? Person. Yeah, I watched The Guild. B- B- the Guild. Oh, The Guild. With, I love B- The Guild. Because he, you know, he was in like season two or three or whatever that one where he was the you know the leader of the, the rival guild for them and was you know just yes. a pick for them and all that. Felicia <laughs> Day was supposed to marry me, but what yes. happened was like the cops <laughs> got involved was, and they were like, can you please leave her alone? She doesn't know who you are. Um, you have to stay 150 feet away at all times. Like, exactly. It's because you're trying you know, to hide stu- a bell in her hair. <laughs> stupid stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? And if you like Will Wheaton, one of the oh, new goodness. movies new movies comes out, he actually narrates the audiobook for it. Uh, Ready Player One. So oh, Yes, I yeah. can't wait for that movie. Mm-hmm. Is it this yeah. weekend? I it think it's like, yeah, yeah. Tonight, tonight, like, uh, tonight. Oh, I'm going to the Alamo yeah. tomorrow. <laughs> Alamo. <laughs> Alamo. 
Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to watching the movie. I've convinced my Do boss. Do you guys have yeah. an Alamo near you? No, I have no idea what you're even talking about. Alamo, Alamo. Alamo. where you get to eat food and it's watch Alamo, movies. Yes, uh, and I bought of them, but I don't have one near us. <laughs> well, so, so there are also sometimes similar things. Studio Movie Grill. If you have one, you can if you look in. See, if you have our one version is that's like the no frills version. Chug a log in the car <laughs> and then eat some Mickey D's and then go in <laughs> and get bed bugs. Like that's our movie going experience. <laughs> So, yeah, just that's be how a we total, do it in Michigan. Or just be like someone who really doesn't care and just sneak McDonald's into the movies <laughs> so everyone has to smell it. Like, I know, like, right? Oh, a movie. You know, uh, yeah, that's how we go to the Dollar Tree, <laughs> get the movie size oh, candy. First of all, load yes. Load it off. <laughs> like, Let load me tell it you, all in your big ass purse. There was a, or your purse. There was a movie house <laughs> by my house. It's not too uh-huh. far away. And there's a comic book store right next to it. And what do you think they have in the whole front section of the comic book store? Uh-huh. Movie size candies. Movie size is the whole because they know everyone's gonna stop in there first, exactly. buy it for a dollar rather than four fifty dollars. Exactly. <laughs> it's so true. I do admit though, I'm a sucker for movie popcorn. Oh, I gotta buy myself a yeah. little popcorn. I agree. I agree. And I don't know if it's the sta- same in the states, but here in Canada, I can go into Costco and buy the movie pass. You don't even have a Costco. Oh really? No, what? not in our area. No. Nope. Oh, I we have Costco's, Costco's. We don't BJ's, have Costco's, BJ's. There. Yeah, you can get that yet too. They, for 30, they have it. 30 here. bucks, I get like two adult passes, yes. two popcorns, and two drinks. Oh, that's, that's nice. That's a pretty good For price. how much? 30 bucks. 30. What the hell? Are you kidding Costco me? Costco does have that. Costco has these killer wow. deals. Like, they have one package have where you get like. Costco. You get six <laughs> movie tickets for like $34. Like, six tickets. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Like a Sam's Club, but that's not as cool as a Costco. Well, it's like the same thing, though. It's Sam's, Club, Sam's Club probably. don't have nothing cool like that. <laughs> well, well, Sam's Club is. We have like is grannies handing Walmart. out pretzel yeah. bites. They're not affiliated shit. with Paramount or whatever, yeah, AMC or whatever. Crazy. So yep. you've been watching a new show or a show. I don't think it's new. It's, it's not been new. out for it's like a year or so. They're in their fifth season. Oh, um, what? I've only yeah. heard about it for like the past year, and it was in season five. Well done. If you're if you're a, a geek, you 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 have to watch. It is hilarious. It's uh, HBO Silicon Valley. Uh, it's not work safe, not children safe, but it is hilarious. And how are you finding the time to watch this then, Cyber? Um, I have a nice computer that uh, I stream it from. So ding, ding, I ding. watch it on my computer, so no kids can see it. There and, you go. Yeah. So, but it is, uh, I put my earphones on. So Me and my nine-year-old it. used to love watching True Blood. Like, that was oh, our boy. favorite show. We used to sit down, <laughs> I can't get a little bit of popcorn. Get out of here with your pants. <laughs> Me and my nine-year-old used to kick up our feet and just I'm watch a little a, True Blood. I'm a judgmental parent, and I'm judging <laughs> we you We right would sit now. there and <laughs> just, just watch True Blood. Like, oh, my God. It was, the perfect, it was the perfect show for father and son. You know what I'm saying? It's the I'm, perfect. I, I get the feeling he's... Uh, well, I hope pulling he, our legs I, here. I really hope <laughs> yeah. so, but it's faux. You really don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you really don't know. I suppose. <laughs> like my son's favorite episode was like the episode where like Suki and the vampire Bill you and, just the like other, and the other Suki. vampire. Like, I, I, like saying, I, I named my dog Suki after <laughs> I know, see? the chick from uh, I like, True you're Blood. Just like saying that name. <laughs> oh, no, I would never have Suki. my son watch that. That's, that's Hello. crazy. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Mm. So before but, everybody Silicon who's Valley. listening to the show starts calling child services and all the other things, relax. I do not allow my son Lord. to watch that. That's okay? right, because I was, I was already giving you the side eye. I was like, mm-mm, <laughs> shitty parent right there. Uh-huh, shitty parent. <laughs> so. Everybody chill out. Leave my Twitter alone. I make, I make pancake cookies of my kids, and you watch some nasty vampire porn with your nine-year-old. No, you don't I, really do that. I got to get back onto my Twitter. Like, I, my Twitter you is to, like... because you probably have a lot of hate mail. Probably. <laughs> At Full probably. on Twitter. So, Silicon Valley. Silicon Mr. Valley. Cyber. So, it's, it's kind of an exaggerated... Uh, like, it's exaggerating what I think probably does happen in... Uh, for st- so it's about a start this company uh, called Pied Piper. It's a startup company. Um, the the uh, main character is trying to get this uh, new technology through, and he's uh, having to deal with all these uh, with probably exaggerated versions of real world things that actually happen in Silicon Valley yeah. when you're up against the big uh, behemoths that uh, are out there in the tech industry. So. Uh, you see him going through trying to get funding. You see him, 
uh, going through buyouts and uh, it's just the whole situation. So he's in this uh, house that uh, uh, the one character, his name is Ehrlich, is basically renting out to businesses to kind of start their business and uh, uh, just everything that happened. I, I, without, I don't want to say too much and spoil it. It just it's worth the watch if you want a good laugh and uh, you're into that tech world of uh, uh, yeah, it's worth the watch if you're if you're into like tech world. I don't even know, know that you need to be in the tech world. They do have some references to tech, technology and coding and stuff, but uh, um, it's it's funny. Cool. I don't know, have, well, have any, has anybody else watched Silicon Valley? <laughs> that could I've be heard it. Better. I haven't watched that. Okay, it's it's funny. I enjoyed it. I, I do cool. enjoy it. And they just really started the first episode of the fifth season. So awesome! Well, I did, we, or you have the links in the show notes. I do for those who are interested. I do. I made sure to put that in. <laughs> right on. All right. How about you, Mister Will Electron? Will. Uh, so I was hanging out with some friends last weekend, and they have a Nintendo Switch. They were like, "We have this game. You should play it. You should get it and play it with us." It's like, okay. And so I we went to Best Buy and I bought Splatoon 2. And if you're not familiar with it, this is a game on the Nintendo Switch. It is a third-person shooter. Um, essentially, you've uh, it, it does have a single-player campaign. So so you're these weird uh, creatures, things called Inklings, where you can be a you can have like a kid form, which is called the inkling form, or a squid form, which is you know you being a squid, and you, uh, base the the basic premise of the game, at least in the multiplayer, because I actually haven't played any single player yet, is um, that the main game mode is you have teams of four players versus uh four v four versus four, and you have these different they're kind of like paintball guns except you're spraying colored ink all over the place. Um, and so when you're in squid form, you can swim through the ink and, and move faster. And then obviously when you're in your uh, kid form, you can shoot your gun and use abilities and stuff like that. Um, so it's pretty cool. I've been having an absolute blast this week playing that. Uh, it's, it's something I definitely don't regret buying. Um, and I'm actually kind of uh, surprised, but you know about how good it is but i'm glad that nintendo has actually created a a decent shooter um ip that they're actually using and everything cuz the characters from uh the original splatoon and i you know you know from the splatoon games are in mario kart and they're going to be in smash brothers and so this is kind of becoming a major thing for them and i think it's doing really well but um yeah go ahead so how long has the Switch been out? Because I know Splatoon came out like at launch, and it seems like the se- you know, the sequel came out really quick. If it's out already. Um. So. So but the original, original Splatoon was on the Wii U. Um. And that's been out for a while. I think. Was well, on the Wii know. U? Okay. Never mind. Yeah. I, the original- I own Splatoon. I just never really played it, but I I must have found the Wii U because I have the Wii U as well. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the original one was on the Wii U. Uh, Splatoon two came out last summer. I want to say. Uh yeah, last July, I think June or July. Um, but so uh, it came out about I uh, heard an alarm eight months ago. Let me let me look it up just because uh, that'll yeah, bother me. I, well, I mean, like I said, I I had just I was thinking that the original came out on the the Switch, and so that yeah you know, that would have put them close to each other. But yeah, um, so the Switch I think so. came out in February or March of last year. And uh, the Splatoon 2 game came out on July 21st, 21st of 2017. All right. Um, but yeah, so I've been playing mostly multiplayer, um, you know, and they have different maps. The cool thing about this game is that um, there's lots of different guns that you can purchase and buy. It looks cute and, and cartoony. Yeah, it's really cool. It's very, it's very kid-friendly, but it's deep enough that, you know, I think anyone can enjoy it. It looks yeah. kind of fun. It does, it does look, look, look fun. fun. One of the things that was funny, they had a was they had the mayo versus ketchup contest where they they had like a patch out that um, instead of like what is it purple and it's like purple and orange or something or normally the ink colors, but they had a contest where it was red and red and white and one team was team ketchup, the other team was team mayo, yeah, and they so kept I, track of how many people were winning each uh, each match. Yeah, so I've been looking into this actually, 
And um, mo- so most of the time, you kind of get randomly assigned a, a contrasting color. So opposite teams always have colors that kind of um, clash with, you- with each other. So you can clearly see who has what territory on the. Oh, yeah. Um, and to explain back up and explain it, the main game mode, the idea is not to get the most kills, but to cover the most uh, uh, territory on the map with ink, with your color of ink. Um, and so you've, you've got very colorful ink and it clashes with the other one. So, uh, I've been looking up what cricket was talking about and these are called splat fests. I think they have one a month and they're scheduled out to like three years, um, two to three years of, uh, you know, since the game has launched. So okay. they've already got these things scheduled as far as I can tell. But yeah, every month it's a, a, a planned thing of, you know, something versus something and people pick the side they want to win. And then you've got to go play matches and try to get your team the most points. Um, so that seems really cool. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I think there's one coming up within like the first week of April, uh, or something like that. So I'm, I'm definitely going to be in on that. Um, but I just, uh, in general, I really like the game mode because well in shooters in general i'm not necessarily the best at just straight up you know getting kills or frags depending on you know your gaming background but um uh in this game they call it being splatted but (laughs) um you know so uh i really like that um there is a ranked mode that you can play when you get to level 10 on your character because you know they don't want you to try to do stuff like that unless you've played the game a little bit and um i got to level 10 yesterday so it took me less than a week to get to that just playing uh an hour or two every evening or um and uh the ranked mode has some different game modes there's one called tower control where there's like a moving tower that starts out in the center and whoever stands on top of the tower um, it gets it to move. So it's kind of like a control point game, but with the control point moving, and it goes through different checkpoints and things like that. Um, if you played Overwatch, it's kind of like their uh, their payload maps, except that uh, it can move back and forth uh, and have checkpoints on both sides. Um, and so whoever's able to get it to the end, uh, if you get it all the way to the end, your team gets it all the way to the end, you automatically win. Or if you run out of time, whoever has made it the farthest, uh, regardless of where it is right now, wins the match. Um, and there's a couple other modes. There's one called Rainmaker, where you're fighting over this uh, this weapon called the Rainmaker that's pretty powerful. And I, I think there's another goal, but I, I think the point is to hold on to that weapon as long as possible. Um, and then... I don't remember exactly off the top of my head what the other ranked mode is. Oh, um, Splat Zones. Uh, so that one's more like your typical uh, kind of king of the hill. You, you've got to keep a certain area on the map covered with your color of ink. Um, and it goes back and forth, and it's pretty wacky and crazy. But um, So I personally really like the, the style of the game. Um, as far as shooters go, I think it's cool. Um, I don't know how many people use it, but I really like the way the motion controls are set up for aiming. Um, cause you can use the Nintendo Switch's motion controls. Um, you've obviously got the thumbstick, uh, and you can generally use that for wide sweeps of movement to the left and right to change which direction you're looking. But for fine aiming, the motion controls are really nice. Um, and then there's a you know there's a league mode where if you get a high enough rank in your ranked battles, then you can join up with a friend or uh, other you know other people and um, just have like a league and and have ranks and that kind of thing. Well, that's I don't cool. Exact details, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Um, they have a lot of features. Uh, another cool thing about this game is that you have gear. You've got hats. You've got shirts, and you've got shoes, and um, you know, you can buy all this different kinds of gear. And the important thing about the gear, besides the fact that a lot of it look, just looks really cool, is that it has abilities uh, assigned to the gear, attached to the gear, that um, give you different things like nice. you take less damage when you're on the enemy ink, <clears throat> or you respawn faster, or yeah, you can run parts. faster, or swim faster. So a lot of really good customization, both in the weapons and the different gear and abilities that you can get. Um and I think it's it's probably something I'm going to be playing for a while. Awesome. And uh, Yogi Yogi said he has it, so hopefully I'll get to 
Yeah, that's the cool thing. The more and more and more I hear you guys talk about the Switch, I'm jealous. I'm just like, I'm just going to. It's pretty cool. It seems really pretty (laughs) fantastic. I'm like real close to picking one up. Dude, it really feels like I really need one. Like, that's what it feels like. You do. We got to all get together. It seems so amazing. Go go ahead, Cricket. Oh, that's not saying the the Switch, I, I went on a. A long train ride this weekend. Oh, this past weekend, the, the switch really helped me. But, as me, uh, remember, I'll talk about I think that. you were losing your mind. On remember, that long as me, ass. it's always easy I to was. apologize. It is. It's easy it is to apologize. You just to, get it. You know, in tax, <laughs> it's tax refund time, right? Like that's mm. going on. Like that should be a thing, right? Nice. Like, <laughs> exactly. Uh, I was going to buy a graphics card, but there's so much money right now. I'm gonna oh, be, yeah. Give me a br- like that's totally what I'm going to be talking about next. <laughs> Well, here's here's the other thing about the Switch. Yikes. Nintendo, and maybe this is, uh, you know, a testament to how locked down they keep their intellectual property, but honestly, the Nintendo games and the games that are on this, that, you know, get released on the Switch and things like that are some of the most unique games that you can buy out of any system. Um, like it's obviously, just really cool some... that you can... I just saw when I was looking at your Splatoon thing that uh-huh. you can even download a mobile app that works somehow with the Nintendo Switch. Yes. Oh, like yes. The, what the for, hell? Seriously? Thank you for reminding me. Okay, so there is a Nintendo Freaking Switch mobile crazy. app. There's a Nintendo Switch mobile app. The only thing it has on it right now is related to Splatoon 2, and I've been messing around with this a little bit. Um, and it is cool because... Um, uh, one of the things they can that you can do, and uh, this may be a stand-in. I don't know how long they're going to have it this way, um, but you you can set it up to have a voice app. Um, it, you know, you can use that as a voice app to chat for Splatoon. So you you make your party in the Splatoon game, and then you chat through the phone. Does That's that make cool. sense? So you know, it would be nice if you could just. I mean, chat we have this cool console but... itself. Uh, <laughs> Like you can on most other platforms, but once they release their um, their online service fully in their paid online service in September, maybe they'll have that. But for now, it's a, it's a cool way to get voice chat. The other really cool thing is, you know, you can see what stages are currently happening because they rotate out the stages. You can't play all of them at once. Um, they rotate every two hours. You can see your battle stats um, and what equipment you have. But the really cool thing about it is they have this little shop, um, and there are pieces of gear on there that you can only buy by getting in the shop. And those, I don't know if they're like randomly generated or if they're you know just put on, but they have a new item that drops in the shop every two hours, and you've got a range of yeah, and they're available for a total of twelve hours uh, each. So it's kind of rotating out. Um, so you've got a total of uh, six items that you could get at any time. And you can have it uh, sent to your game on the Switch to purchase from there. So you've got a range of uh, things that are available, gear that's available for a limited amount of time. And you could say, hey, that looks cool. I think I want to buy it. And if you have enough money in-game to buy it, then you can send it to the Switch and you can buy that item. Now, even if you don't have enough money to buy it yet, you can still send it there, and then you can buy it um, once you have enough money. So I think that's a cool feature, too. And there are some better items on there than you can just buy in the store in-game. Yeah, so, so I'll just give my an, like, an endorsement for the Switch. Uh, uh-huh. I, I picked one up you know, when, when they came out, and I didn't really play it that much just because I had so many other systems I could use that you know, I didn't really use the mobility of it. Mm-hmm. But like I said, I was on a train for you know 20 hours this past weekend. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to bring my Switch because everybody's been talking about Breath of the Wild, and I had played it before, but I never beat it. So I you know loaded my Switch up, uh, brought out Breath of the Wild with me. I had to restart it. Even I was about 16 hours into it, but I had no idea where I was, <laughs> you know, what I was doing, how to play the game. So I was like, ah, I hate to give up that time, but I'll restart the game and. So I spent probably you know another ten twelve hours of my journey just playing uh, Breath of the Wild. And yeah, that that is a a really great game. I haven't played too many of the Zelda games. I played all the early ones, but I didn't have the the systems between the Super Nintendo and the Wii. I never had, so I didn't play any of those uh, any of the Zelda games that were in those generations of systems. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm oh, not even Ocarina of Time. 
No, I've. I, I think. Ooh. I think I. I have it or I have it available. Can you play it on the Wii U? Um, I don't remember, but I, it's one of those. Yeah, I've heard great things about Ocarina of Time, and I wanted to play it. I just you know, haven't been able to. Yep, that's but, yeah, understandable. That, the, the Switch is great, especially yeah. You, know, you can play it in handheld mode, which is what I did. Um, the, I think the batteries were lasting me about three hours before I plugged them in, and luckily on the on the train they do have plugs there, so I was able to plug it in. Um, but then also just you know it doesn't take much you know another little you know the little uh, not adapter but the, the little uh, place where you put it in in order to to put it up on your on your TV is really nice because we were on vacation actually when we went down to Universal Studios um, we took the, our switch with us and you know we we're able to to bring it and play the games down there we had played um, was it Snipper Clips. Uh, we picked mm-hmm. that one up. So that's a that's a real fun game, you know, because it's a, a puzzle game and it's a cooperative game, and you know, you're sitting there yelling at each other, no, 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 turn this way, turn this way, no, cut me here, cut me, cut me. I mean, it's <laughs> it's just fun. It it sounds crazy so if you just hear if you just hear that, but essentially what it is is you are these two uh, kind of uh, tombstone shaped creatures, and you have to uh, do different little puzzles. Some of them are you have to cut yourself into a certain shape um, in order to to match. The picture or you might have to transport a ball from one place to another and so you have to cut yourself into like a cup shape and you know pass it from one person to another and essentially you put you overlap yourself with your you know your partners and then you press a button and whatever places you overlap with them it cuts that much off of that character yep um, and i think you can play up to four players on it i guess yes. there's different puzzles yes, you the can. more players mm-hmm. you have um, we only we haven't picked up extra controllers, so we only were able to play two at a time. But it was a fun game. It's only like twenty bucks, so it's not an expensive investment for how much fun we were having. Um, I need to pick up the new Kirby because uh, we've always loved the Kirby Kirby games, and uh, since Kirby was its star allies or something like that. Yeah, I'll actually be out. talking about that in just a moment. And uh, but that game, you know, like I said, I, I haven't really looked at it, but it's a Kirby game, so how can you go wrong? Kirby games are always good. One of my favorite, <clears throat> one of my favorite series. So. so, yeah, that actually segues really well into what I was going to talk about. Um, in general, I like the idea of Kirby games, and I've I've played I think uh, two of them. I played um, one of the original ones uh, that I think was on the SNES, but it got ported to GBA. So I played it, uh, the GBA version. Essential, uh, essentially, is like Nightmare in Dreamland. Um, and I had fun with that. And uh, I played some of the Nintendo 64, 64 version as well. Um, and that was also pretty fun and interesting, you know, just sucking up enemies and getting different abilities and things like that. Um, and uh, Kirby Star Allies, I played a little bit of that because I did pre-order it. And, um, you know, I got it in from Amazon. And, um, you know, I was pretty excited because I played the demo and I thought it was pretty cool. And... Um, and I got it in. Uh, I haven't played my copy, but I played at a friend's place. Um, and we were playing for a while, and we're sitting there, and we're having fun in the moment and stuff like that. And as we're playing through, I'm just realizing, though, um, there are these, you know, you can unlock hidden entrances and stuff like that to get extra stars and stuff. Every time you get 100 stars, you get an extra life. And there's a whole lot of stars, and so there's a whole lot of extra life. So... Um, it's a cool game. Like you can combine abilities with different people. You can, um, uh, make friends essentially with some of the enemies so that they help you out. Um, and you use their abilities and combine the abilities that you picked up and, uh, they interact in some pretty cool ways and do some neat stuff. But, uh, you know, so the concept is great and I really like the idea, but it just felt to me like it wasn't challenging enough. It just kind of felt like it almost played itself in a way because i just never i never really feel like i'm in danger of losing or uh, not necessarily even losing of of it just even really being difficult um so i i was a little bit disappointed with that well isn't that true with most of the kirby games i mean it's maybe and maybe i didn't play enough of them you know to to know that or understand that but um yeah yeah, that's why I mean, that is one of the things that we we do like about the Kirby games is you know my my daughter's not the you know not necessarily the best platformer you know she's you know it definitely holds her own a lot of times but you 
you know, and as she was growing up, you don't have to worry that much about dying because yeah. you, you have a lot of lives there, and you know, and it also just makes it fun when you you know kind of troll each other, and you know, um, like <laughs> I think that's one where you can kind of like advance the screen and makes one miss a jump, or you know, you block them from landing the jump, and so yeah, it's like you know, not a big deal that you lose life. You know, oh, well, that was that's the so. other thing in in this game. Um, whenever the main the player one goes off screen, the other players are just teleported to where. Uh, the player is so there's not even any danger with going off screen except for the main player yeah that i guess that yeah that is true i forgot that is how a lot of them are um you, you know they go into a little bubble um because that, that's a lot of times too it's like oh i'm about to make a jump or i can't make the jump it's like fine just go in the bubble and i'll and yeah <laughs> come up to me and i'll touch you and take you out of the bubble and you're caught up yeah so it, it's nice if you're playing the you know the kind of the combined skill level with you know someone who's not real great Versus yeah, someone who's skilled. Well, and I I don't want to say that it's a bad game or that any or anything against the game because it's a very well done game and it's really cool. Uh, it just you know wasn't necessarily what I was expecting, but I wouldn't yeah. want to discourage people from buying it if they want to try a Kirby game because it's very polished, it's very well done, and it's it's pretty cool. It just never nece- it just doesn't necessarily warm up to. And I've read a couple reviews, but it doesn't necessarily warm up to the part where there's um, too much of a challenge, except yeah. kind of the last level. Another thing I, that I do like about the Kirby games is they don't really take themselves seriously a lot of times. So yeah. they, and they kind of have fun with some concepts like Kirby Epic Yarn, where your characters get transported to you know Yarn Land or whatever it's called, and you know you're you're made out of yarn, so you can sit there and you can change shape, you know, because you're just this ball of yarn type thing, and you can. You know, change shape to be different things, and you get different abilities. So you can turn into like a, a boy in his blob. Yeah, that, that type of thing. You can turn into <laughs> uh, you know a um, uh, spaceship, and you know have a spaceship level. You can have a you know a submarine level. <laughs> uh, you can you know some of them are you know you combine where one person is like the tank, you know is the bottom of the tank, the other person is the top of the tank. So it, it's they're you know they're a lot of fun. I think. Yep. But but yeah, it like like you said, it 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 wasn't providing what you wanted, but. Well, and and see, that's the thing. Uh, like, this is this is uh, you know, take this, take what I'm saying here with a grain of salt because I am the kind of person who Dark Souls is one of my favorite series. I like so, Souls. Wait, what? What happened? Did someone say? <laughs> what I was like, that? Did you play a <laughs> clip? <laughs> no, that was me. I said I like salt. <laughs> oh. Uh, <laughs> I was like, what the hell was so, that? Ironically. I was uh, opening up a bag of barbecue chips, and you said, "Take that with a grain of salt." And I said, "I uh, like salt." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so uh, yeah, so it's Sorry. just not not necessarily my kind I of. I thought I could game, just. But I don't want to there. discourage people from buying it because I'm not saying it's a bad game in any way, shape, or form. At first, when you said I like salt, I thought you were talking about there's a, a game called Salt and Sanctuary, which oh people yeah, said, which people that said is, is a like, great oh, game. This is an entirely which, different game. Well, well, people have said it's essentially a 2D Dark Souls oh, game. Two D Dark Souls. And so he was yep. talking about Dark Souls, and then oh you know, okay, I got gotcha. so that, you. That's so that's why <laughs> that's why I thought that you were, you were saying it that you were actually contributing to the conversation. Nope, not not at all, not at all contributing to the conversation. <laughs> No, 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 no. That's my contribution right there. That is so silly. You guys are so silly. I didn't even know that it would sound like Salt is good. I like to salt. Make you guys I like salt. Like, what? What was that? <laughs> oh, my God. So sorry for interrupting your salt conversation. Oh, nope. That's fine. I, I was just saying, you know, it's it's a somewhat easy game, but it's a good game. It just depends on what you're looking for. So... Yep, that's all I had to say. Oh, right. and, and you guys know me, like I, I up to this point, you haven't heard me say pretty much anything negative about a game. Um, Until usually, now, <laughs> usually I like most of what I play, so I, I'm I'm fairly lax. It just uh, for some reason just kind of missed my Not expectation. Feeling yeah, understandable. Wasn't so is it is it my turn now? Is that yes, it turn? is. All oh, right. So finish oh. those barbecue chips or whatever they are. I know, right? I did. Yeah. I totally, like, if you hear me pause, it's because I'm totally, like, processing. Crunch, 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 crunch. <laughs> All right. Um, in game, I have been doing, you know, the basics, arc, and then some weird 
blocky version of art. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I'm not really spreading myself out into any other areas of gaming right now. We, oh, I feel yeah. like we just eat, like... I looked at my um, Steam count on ARC, and I was like, holy mother of biscuits, I have played, like, over 100 hours of ARC in, like, a two-week span. I was like, oh, my God. Um, But, so, yeah, what we we switch it up. Like, right now, holy crap, have you guys seen the the Easter dinos in-game yet? Oh, oh I have. Like, oh, my God. All right, so we, okay, so it all started when we were busting it out on Falloon's um, server, for valentine's day and then we hopped over and started doing our faux science checking out the prim plus server official on ragnarok so we've been rocking that out and then all of a sudden pixar dropped this tuesday was it tuesday i feel like it was tuesday pixar dropped and we're like oh and i was like i'm not gonna buy it because i entered this contest this magical contest from this arc servers whatever dot not thing that yogi posted in our discord channel and i was like i know that i never win anything like if there's like five people and i had my ticket in and i never win anything but congratulations to our crr member emma ty because she won so that's really awesome i didn't win but i knew the person who won so that's cool but um so then goon i won the goon contest for pixar bless his heart goon uh bought the game for me <laughs> so i got pixar i won the contest but a different contest so um then we started playing that and then all of a sudden arc dr- like totally dropped uh their easter content so then it's like what the hell am i supposed to do like go back to arc for now. the love of biscuit like oh my god i'm sitting here i'm going this is gonna be kind of problematic because Ark keeps multiplying and recreating <laughs> itself on all these crazy ass platforms. I'm like, how are we gonna keep up? Like we're Although, all gonna be se- like separated all over the place. It's from ridiculous. what I hear, uh, uh, Pixar has elements of dark and light in it too. Exactly. <laughs> Isn't it like dark and my light? Barbecue chip. Uh, Minecraft yeah. and Ark yeah. all mashed together. <laughs> yeah, yep. F- yeah, that's what we were saying last night. If Minecraft and dark and light and Ark had a threesome, and a baby came out of it, that's Pixar. And you talk about Arc Multiply, it's also Arc Mobile. Mobile, yeah. Which, oh, which, gosh. I, which I would just say that I play Well, that's only if you have an Apple product right it's now. Coming, it's not even on it's mobile It's coming yet. to Android. Yeah, it is, but it's not. Like, right now. So No, but they said In the future, soon, so. but not. <laughs> They're still multiplying, don't worry. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, come <laughs> on. Like, come on. Do they want us all salivating and connected to, like, connected to some electronical device? Because I'm really thinking they do. I had no idea. I mean, that's how they make money, right? Oh, Oh, my God. They don't have a subscription fee, so. Crazy. At least there's, yeah, that's what I was going to say. At least least there's not a subscription fee. So, pretty much, I've been playing ARC in various forms. (laughs) So, that's what I've been doing in-game. But um, we have hopped into Pix Art, and that we obviously will be talking more about this on our Rated Art podcast. But um, for those of us who have hopped in, it is actually created by Snail Games, which is the parent company they like bought out um, Wild, Wild Card Studios Hot. in 2015. Hot. 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 <laughs> and it is 2018, and there are still people on the freaking forums going, Oh my god, this company totally ripped off of Ark Survival Evolved. Did it's they like, even get uh, permission? I'm like, dude. They own it. Par- what? Are you. <laughs> I you feel like those people like mofos. ate a piece of the stupid cake. <laughs> <laughs> and then they went back for seconds and thirds. Well, yeah. back for well, seconds. The, the other problem, like, if you follow the forums, you know, because of this game, people, are, you know, are just completely, you know, going off on. Uh, you know, on the studio saying, well, you should fix your own game instead of making these other games. Like, well, they're not making these other games. These other companies are making these other yeah, games. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's, it's Snail Games that made yeah. Pixar. It's the whatever game, whatever company that was that made the, you know, the GTA mobile that, you know, that made Arc Mobile. It's not the same people. Now go yeah, get exactly. back to taming your stuff on your official rates. Go. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's ridiculous. So, like, a lot of us in the Crossroom Rebellion gaming group um, have got to hop into Pixar. And Luminin and the group just fired up an unofficial server for us to play on because official life is a little bit sketchy. <laughs> just a little bit. Are we going to talk about that tonight or wait? Um, no, tomorrow? I think we're going to actually have to devote an entire episode to Pixar for Rated Arc. So if you guys are into Pixar and you want to hear our discussions more in depth, 
follow ratedark.com. I started playing there. it today and I haven't Head put it down there. all day. I've been I'm, playing it all day. I know, it's fun. It honestly is fun. It's fun. I thought I was going to get in and kind of hate it, but I was like, listen, I, I like play it a Ark. lot more than I thought I would. I podcast <laughs> about Ark. I got to play this. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I picked it up and it was real cheap. It was like 15 bucks. So I, I picked it, it up. It was 19.99. Okay, 19.99. Okay, relax Normally everybody. 25. I didn't get a special deal. It was nineteen ninety nine. Everybody actually, saw it. it is uh, it is currently uh, discounted until the third of April. So you did kind of get a special deal. Yeah, because it's, yeah, it's normally twenty four ninety nine. Oh well, okay. I didn't get an Uber deal, but um, so I was like, I have to get this. You know, I talk about this game so much, I have to try it out, and I'm pleasantly surprised. I'm having a lot of fun with it. I've been playing it all day and just having a blast. Well, one of the things that you know that I'm finding fun with it right now is with arc everything i was doing basically was taming dinos breeding dinos and all that i really haven't done much with the dinos in this game it's been me either it's been mining so it's got you know but that's because you know that you have to mine a little more in order to build right. build your stuff but it's a, right. little, a nice little change and for those of you who do not know what we're talking about it is a game um, that is like a pixelized version of arc it's not like arc is done on the unreal engine 4 where Pixar is exactly what the title said. It's Pixar. Uh, um, it's wow. still done. I'll be honest, Unreal. I'm pretty sure it's done in Unreal Engine is 4 because the Engine interface 4? is yeah, exactly if, if the same. If you look same. at the file structure, it's, it's still not, shooter yeah. game. Yeah, yeah, it is still shooter <laughs> still game. So shooter game yes. It is on the Unreal. <laughs> it is. Um, maybe on the uh, that engine, but it looks nothing like it. Like it's not. It's. It is very pixelized. It is. Uh, it says, enter a world of mystery, danger, and ancient dinosaurs, mythical beasts, and cubes. Work by yourself or with a tribe of others to gain materials, craft useful items, tame wild dinosaurs, and build huge bases to survive in Pixar. It is an early access game. Therefore, do not get in. Do not nerd rage. Do not expect this thing to be in final, re- like, full-on <laughs> release. It's, like, day three, right? And don't nerd rage. You mean, like, we were doing yesterday? It's day two. I wasn't ne- nerd the, raging. the servers aren't up. <laughs> no, we were more Nitrato raging. Because as much as Nitrato wants to think that they're badass server hosts, they're not. They have shitty customer service at best. And they are very late in the game when it comes to updating servers. Like, it's very behind. It's very behind. But... Well, I think they're one of the other games in town. But what I would have to say on the flip side is Nitrato actually has a more um, intuitive like uh, server hosting setup, like with all like the way they have it organized and stuff. I think it's a lot better than what I've seen on some of the other ones. So, and like Luminant said, go with the enemy you know than <laughs> than the enemy you don't know. So we might have our issues with Nitrato, like them taking our money and not giving us a server. <laughs> And then holding us like in a constant customer service ticket war for like four months. Yeah, they're not the best. But that's what we were lamenting over yesterday. But I, as far as it goes, like early access, I was really impressed. I have not had an issue. We log in as the, the way it is right now. Obviously, they're tweaking stuff. They're changing stuff. Like when the fir- when the game first was announced, they said we're only supposed to be able to tame our dinosaurs for three days. They totally nixed that. You can have your dinosaurs now forever. Uh, I think there's like a 25 cap, right, for a tribe or something, like a 25 by, dino cap or something. By default, looking in the game settings, by that looks like the I'm talking about setting. official, though. So official, you know, if you host a server, you can probably dick around with those numbers. But unofficial you can't change that stuff that's not changeable like that's on the game so you want to figure out that and then also um what we have found out this week quickly was that it's a troll fest like this game is magical and wonderful but on the underside it's also very magical for trolls and cricket you can uh you want to share a little bit about that <laughs> So Fun it, with trolls. Yes. Holy so, shit! It was crazy. So, so, so just yeah, you know, we'll start with the, the quick punching trees tip for this for this game. <laughs> uh, when, when when you drop down a a box by default, it is unlocked. Uh, yes, something that please that know went, that something that was true with Ark like two and a half years ago oh, when the game first God. launched. Um, so unless you pin code it, it will be unlocked, and anybody can come by and get to it. Right. So, you know, we, we had we had our base. You know, we had a door. The doors, the doors, you know, fortunately, are locked by default. You know, we had a, a house with a door, and we had our chest inside. Um, there was new ones dropped, and we didn't we didn't pin code them because we just forgot because we're so used to arc. 
um, me and Blue, we were on the game and we were going in and out of the house, you know, doing our doing our thing, you know, gathering gathering metal and going and smelting it. And some random dude, you know, who I I believe was you know was foreign based upon the name and the fact that you know only said a, a couple things and it was very you know kind of short English um, things, uh, snuck in the door right behind us and took all the stuff out of our out of our chests because I, I didn't realize it till I was going to craft something and then I look and the chests are empty. So I was like, hey, Blue, did you take the stuff out of the chest or something? He's like, no, why? I'm like, because there's nothing left in the chest. <laughs> and I turn around, here's this random dude looking at me. Ridiculous. So I closed so close the door real quick. His name was Lapoon. Lapoon. Uh, I think, actually, I think it was Paloon. Was like, Paloon. Um, I think it was Lapoon because with I was accents, reading it. Lapoon. Over the, uh, <laughs> but uh, there's accents over the, over the letters. Um, but so, so I closed the door to lock him in there. And, you know, then I, I say, I was like, you know, put the stuff back. And all he responds with, you know, give me copper pickaxe. <laughs> wow. I was, so I'm like, put the stuff back first. And, and I, I, it's like, I'll give him a copper pickaxe. It, it, it costs two copper and a, and a wood. I'll give it to him in the, at this case. So I'm like, put the stuff back first. And he does, and he's not. He's just standing there. And somehow, I guess oh the window God. was unlocked. And he opened the window and snuck out the window. <laughs> so now I'm pissed at this guy because he stole all the shit that we had in there. His base was nearby ours. It was a very large, um, just you know, rectangle base. You know, had no ceiling to it. So I'm like, well, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna it see what I can. It was Paloon. Paloon. So, You're right. So I'm like, I'm gonna see what I can, what I can do. To this guy. So I go over and I start digging the ground out from underneath his foundations, which you can do because <laughs> you can. It is horrible because you have to go through an extra measure um, in order to prevent people from manipulating the the land around you. So. He was right next to water, so I was hoping to try to basically create a moat for him. Um, unfortunately, the water doesn't spread enough, but I start digging underneath his base. Um, he saw that, and he went over and started digging holes all around our base. So at <laughs> this point now... It, <laughs> I edited the picture to the show notes. <laughs> oh, so at gosh. this point now, everything starts getting escalated. Um, you know, We're getting angry at him. He's, you know, he's, I guess, getting angry at us. And then he literally can start putting down his own foundations... Six blocks away from ours. Literally six teeny tiny blocks. Which, Someone is, can which is really build close. Right next to and, and somehow now we, we can actually even put them even closer, but he was able to put yes. them six blocks around. So I was, you know, I was assuming he was going to use his own foundations and completely encase our house because our house was only like a you know, six by six. So you, know, you could reasonably cre- you know, create a 12 by 12 to go around that and keep us from getting to our stuff. Uh, so. You know, at this point, I'm just met, you know messing around going with other stuff, and then I think that's when Esme got on, and I start telling her what's going on, and we proceed. Operation- I lost my ever loving mind. <laughs> and I so bet we you proceed did. to Operation. Uh, what what should we call it? Uh, Fuck over a balloon. That's <laughs> or what uh, <laughs> dirt wad. It was like we devoted two hours of our real life <laughs> so, teaching this guy a lesson. <laughs> So at this point now, there is like three or four of us, and we start just he getting picks, all the dirt we yeah, can get from underneath his house. He robbed us and then and, jacked up our base. So we were like, dude, there's way more than just one of us here, okay? So we start <laughs> filling in his house every square Completely. with dirt. <laughs> with freaking dirt. And then when I realized that I could make stone foundations and place them inside, inside of his building, I encapsulated his respawn bed and his entire forge and all that shit because he totally did it to us for it. Like he was coming at us. I'm like, you light me up, I'll burn you. So we burned him for like two hours. Like he, And then he, once he had nothing left to lose, he came back over to us and was trying to do that shit to us, but it didn't end well. Yeah, it so did not it, end well. Yeah. So basically, it you know as as we were saying, it seems like it's a you know it's a troll's pa- it's a troll's paradise in, in a lot of ways because you can just screw with people's stuff. Now there is a a thing you can make, which I saw the patch notes. They did make it where you can now make it at an earlier level that allows you to put this sign post thing up and get this renewable. A resource that you but have dude, to, you have to constantly papers, collect. It's only one it's hour. It's so stupid. And it's such yeah. a small zone. It's a really part small of this zone. Game is so yeah, stupid. There is, I just put there one is up. A, there is a larger one that you can get, but it's not until level like fifty or something like that. Like I, um, like I on the, the official, I think I'm level forty-seven, and I couldn't even craft it yet. So I'm assuming it's a bigger, 
it's a bigger area. But yeah, you, you get these papers when you complete the quests in the game. Uh, you use, it seems like you get ten it's of these like papers every time you go quest. Like documents or something like yep. land claim or dirt claim or whatever. And so, so they they did you know quickly put out a patch that you know now a lot of creatures will drop these papers as well. So it seems like it's much easier to get them. But still, if you have any you know any considerably sized base, you're going to need. It you know, is ridiculous. You know, five or six of these things for every yeah. hour that you don't want people to to so be able stupid. to mess with your stuff. Um, yeah, not a fan. So, I mean, if you're you're anywhere on you know an area where people are going to screw with you, you know, you have to. Have they will things. screw with you. Yeah. Well, on our unofficial it's here, ridiculous. I'm not that, I'm not that worried about it because well, we'll just kick people from the server if they start screwing right. with people like that. Um, but in all real, real, you know, like the whole thing is while we're retaliating we know like this shouldn't even be a possibility like you should not be able to lay yeah. stone foundations in another person's face yeah and the, at the end of the game for dude was is i put the pictures in our show notes the end of the game <laughs> for this dude was somehow somehow when he was attacking us he got on top of gunette's head and Gunette stood there for like 40 minutes. We had dude locked in a floating pattern like above while I took my real life time boxing this asshole in to kill him <laughs> off so that we wouldn't have to deal with his BS anymore while the other crew was finding us a new further away place to live that we wouldn't have to live by this whack jagged. We told, I mean, come on, come on. You know, it, it was ridiculous. So it's so entirely broke for PvE and PvP right now. The lines are crossed. The streams are crossing. It's ridiculous. It is a troll's paradise. It is ridiculous. There's no reason why somebody should be able to do what we did to him and what he did to us. But hey, that's the way the game is designed, you know? Yeah, you feel like crap doing it. If you have a conscience, you're like, I am being a total asshole right now. But you're like, am I? Or am I just playing the game the way these jack wagons made it? Yes, that's how I feel it's like it. that's unfortunately oh, how a lot of uh, voxel-based games work. It's so can stupid. Work. I mean... I mean yeah, I, I mean, left granted, my it, reviews on Steam. So did Falloon. I left my reviews, and I'm like, I com- we completely covered this game on our Rated Dark podcast, and you guys claimed to have taken the best parts of Dark and Light, the best parts of Ark Survival Evolved, and this is what you came up with? This? This? No, this is not the best. Uh, Go uh, back to the drawing board and get your shit together, then come back and tell me it's the best. Because when you're playing on <laughs> Official, this is not the best. Your version of the best is starkly, vastly different than the best. <laughs> so hot. The best is. Not hot. So, not the best. <laughs> so granted, it is so early access. The game it's hasn't, fun, even, been, it hasn't even been out a, a week yet. But it's so, not the best. It's you know, fun. So but it's I'm not imagining the best. they'll they'll probably you know keep making tweaks like they did with you know increasing the drop rate for this stuff. Um, they'll probably... Oh my god, you shouldn't even have to buy this shit. It should just be baked into the game. You shouldn't even have to, like... So that's the cool part, one, that there's quests in the in the game. We should say that. There's quests in the game. It is a multiplayer. You can also play single player. You can also play on official servers. You can also rent servers. It's very much like ARK in that way. But there are quests where there were not that in ARK. Is there, are there quests in Dark and Light? Yes, there is. Yes, there is. All right, so that's the crossover. That's the best. That's best the best. Quest. The best. Not the best. <clears throat> if you have to quest to protect a teeny tiny portion of land, that's not the best. No. It, it felt very much like a mobile game where they try to rob you of your real life time in order to pro- like progress. That's the feeling I felt. I feel like I was being microtransactioned in a game that I'm paid for like in early access already. Like It, fe- it felt very cutthroat. So I told them they have no business running officials on this game. They should just purely rent servers because their official life is fucking broken. And this one is horrible. It is horrible on day one. Like, no, they were tooting their horn a little too soon, in my opinion. Oh, so I guess one other thing to, to mention. Uh, so I was playing a little more on official today before I jumped onto the Luminan server. And so we were, you know, we were talking and saying that we were imagining probably most of the people playing this game are you know, arc players, but hearing just some of the people asking for, you know, how do I do this? You know, how, you know, how to punch wood and all this, it seems like a lot of players probably are not arc players because some of the questions they're asking, if you played arc at all, you would know it. Like there was people asking, how do I feed my dino? 
Exactly. It's like, well, he'll put food in his inventory. I mean, yeah. or, you know, how do I drink water? And, and yeah, like, they're I probably was, coming from was, like Trove and Minecraft and stuff like that. Yeah. And I was going to get snarky with that one. You don't have to one. drink in Minecraft? I've never played Minecraft yeah, 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 you long do. enough to care. Yeah. And oh, I was going, so you do, so they should know that. I was going to get snarky with, with uh, how do I drink because in the tutorial they literally tell you how you drink the moment you step inside Which any water. Which is another point, right, Cricket? They have a really amazing tutorial. Just, yeah, and you see it every time you play a new server. Whether you like it or not, <laughs> they need no... to be able to turn that off. There, hey, at there's least no way that I can um, tell to turn it off. Could you imagine everything in your life you're doing for the first time? Great tutorial. But, but after the second and third and fourth and sixth and tenth time, no. No, I don't want to see this tutorial. Yeah, so I, I do like that they've um, they've mimicked the, the, uh, the commands from ARC. Um, so everything that we did in ARC you know, as far as what buttons do right. what you know, are here, you know, the, the J whistle's still there. Yeah. Although, is it just me, or does anybody actually hear a whistle when you whistle? No, I don't hear a whistle. Yeah, so the J whistle is even more deadly, because at least before, if you were trying to type something, and you accidentally hit J before opening up your, you know, your, your uh, like, global chat or something, you would hear that whistle, and be like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, quick, press U before everything comes running at me. You don't hear it now, so I can foresee, you know, that damn J key uh, being even worse uh, in this game than it was in ARC. You know what I did? I had my uh, my Taradon, and it was my first one, and I wanted to put it on passive, and I hit aggressive by accident, and this thing just took off like a bat out of hell, so I attacking everything in the area and just flew off. I have no idea where it is. It's just <laughs> somewhere fighting stuff. That's funny because I was actually just saying yesterday uh, when you tame something, it by default, if you look at its, uh, its aggression level, it says aggressive. But it seems more like a neutral or attack my target because they're not acting aggressively. They, they're not attacking everything. They're only assisting me. Right, right. So I, so I was even saying that, oh, aggressive doesn't mean aggressive in this, but... I guess maybe there's some disconnect. No, it between. does. I hit. I hit it by accident, and as soon as I hit it, this thing took off like a bat out of hell. Okay, it so killed a fomia. It killed a lightning Cyber bug, Judge which I wanted because I need a lightning bud. Oh, so, sorry. Um, later, right. dude. Bye, so Cyber maybe, Judge. Have a good night. Yeah, so and then so another maybe it just says aggressive, but it's not aggressive. When then you first another pterodon was flying above me. One after that, and then they just flew off, and I don't know where they went. They're making babies. Word. So how do you get another one? Uh, I've gone through many a uh, Tyranodon already, um, but we can touch more on all that uh, tomorrow when we record. For sure. <laughs> I think it's still you, Esme, unless you were done. Oh, sorry. I was hitting a different button. Okay. Apparently. Yeah, we get, we definitely will be covering more Pixar in the future, and you can find all that info at ratedark.com because we kind of want to do a whole episode on it because there's a lot to say, obviously. If you could tell. Yeah. But I've also been watching a show called The Gifted. Have you guys watched that? Nope. I like it. I like it a lot. It's um, The Gifted. Is that a Marvel show? A th- yeah. Well, it's a yeah. It's um Marvel television and it kind of references X Men. Um Wait. Yeah, they're like music. I love it. Man, I need to watch this now. Oh my god. I watched I freaking busted out like eight episodes in a row. Um it's The Gifted is a television series created by Fox. It is based on Marvel Comics, X-Men properties. It is connected to the X-Men film series. It is set in an alternate timeline where the X-Men have disappeared. The show is produced by 20th Century Fox in association with, association with Marvel Television. So it is really good. I Sounds really enjoy kind of- it. Kind of like Legion, what they're doing with that, too. I like this better. It Was Legion the one where it was a bunch of, like... I think I complained about this on another episode when we were doing our rated extra. Like it was really hard to follow. Like some dude was in a mental facility, right? Yes. Well, it I was, can't it handle was that. Kind, it was that was so kind of the point uh, yeah, of it. Yeah, was dumb. Was I couldn't be that way, but <laughs> it was too much of a mind screw for me to follow. No, I got gotcha. you. Like, so I I didn't watch Legion, but uh, I know Legion is the name of uh, Cy- one of the forms of Cy- what I think Cyclops and Jean Grey's. Uh, Sons is it that is that the same legion that's in them in that TV show? Uh, I think they changed it slightly for the TV series. Um, I'm not going to give spoilers, but it is related to one of the characters that we know from the main X Men. Okay, so it but, might it might be a different one. I, I know I know that Summers is one of the big powerful ones. I also know there's like an Xavier kid. Uh, yeah. 
So maybe this, it might be this that show, one. The Gifted, it's only in its first season. I believe. I think it's approaching maybe its second season. But um, it started in October of 2017, so it's really new. So the I'm first have to season, look that up now. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, the first one. season. Yeah, it, I love it. I honestly, it kept me like engrossed the entire time. I was playing it. I thought I could just watch it on my second monitor while I was playing Ark, and then I would look over and I was like dying of thirst and hunger because <laughs> I was so engrossed in what was going on in the show I was like I gotta watch another one I gotta know and all of a sudden uh, it's like 4 a.m and I'm like holy mother of god so I where can you go watch this actually huh? it's on Fox um I think I was watching uh yeah I was watching it on um I just went to the internet and watched it through the browser oh, okay but but that's what I did but um yeah I don't know if it's on Hulu or any of that stuff, but season one aired from October 2nd, 2017 to January 15th, 2018. There's 13 episodes and I freaking love it. And it said that the um, second season was renewed for January 4th of 2018. So it's already, it's already out into the second season. So I really like it. It it starts from like, everybody is realizing their powers and it's definitely in like a, like a period of time the timeline is where it's like aliens against like not aliens but gifted people against normal like humans and like they call them mutants and you know it's like um nobody knows who's gonna come out with power so like it starts following the storyline mm. of the family where the dad actually worked for the company who was kind of prosecuting the mutants. Oh, but then man. his own kids end up being mutants, so he has to go rogue and protect them and like go underground and befriend the 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 group that's trying to protect everybody with abilities. And it's oh, yeah. really a really great plot it really is it's rogue like the mutant rogue love it ha, love ha, it ha, ha, so ha. check this out it's in the show notes and yeah that's, um, uh, actually so i just looked it up you can watch it on hulu if you have a oh that's cool. For that. cool that's awesome um also uh just a quick thing nvidia's <laughs> there's this article i came across on pc gamer nvidia's uh dgx-2 pack 16 volta gpus um, selling for 399k but this all stemmed from a story or an article i have to open up now um nvidia ceo says we're not anywhere close to meeting the demand for its gpus <laughs> so isn't that nuts like we all know it's been kind of hard coming across a graphics card and if you want to upgrade your graphics cards it's a little sketchy well like the ceo uh jensen hung has been busy this week with the company's annual gpu technology conference but in pre-gtc interview with TechCrunch, the bigger news for gamers is the statement the video supply chain is working really hard and you know all of our partners are working around the clock we've got to come closer to the demand of the market and right now, we're not anywhere near close to that. So we're just going to have to keep running. So the article says, in short, if you're hoping graphic card prices will return to normal anytime soon, you might be in for some disappointment. Um, oh, that stinks. I know the, art, the article states that the culprit here isn't just cryptocurrency miners, yep. which is what Jensen claims represents actually only a small percentage of NVIDIA's total market share. But gamers are another big piece of the pie, certainly. And it says that's where NVIDIA's roots lie. But if you look a bit further, it's clear that the machine learning and AI research is undergoing a sea change in technology. At the GTC keynote, they said, for example, Jensen unveiled the updated DGX-2 server, which packs a whopping 2 PFLOPS of machine learning com- computational oh, two power. Oh, petaflops? Yes, petaflops! <laughs> Into a 16 GPU box, $399,000 per box. You might think I demand mean, it's, would be low. It, that is an amazing <laughs> amount of power. Like, I, I don't even really God. know exactly what a flop is. Like, I just you, know that most things know, are like, in teraflops. A like, floating are you having point a hard time keeping up second. the demand because you're making these insanely crazy ass things? Like, what? Um, Thank yeah. you, Cricket. That's, that's, that's actually <laughs> helpful. It, what was it? What was it? Yeah, oh, it's for floating point operation per second 
Or flip with operations. Go. There, yeah. ding, ding, ding. It says price to 399000 per box. You might think demand would be low, but they suspect larger research groups are lining up to buy the box. That's not without precedent. They said that the original DGX1 server was announced two years ago at GTC, sporting the first Pascal processors and priced at, priced at 129000 And that was just with eight GPUs. So this one had 16 GPUs. So um, they said with the surge in demand from multiple vectors, not to mention the JDDR5 and the AMD and NVIDIA would like, GPUs are set to remain in short supply. Mining and profitability have, has taken a significant hit as, as of late. So as least... So at least demand from that sector should be dropping. Even so, while Jensen says he's frustrated so many developers and gamers around the world cannot get access to their G-forces, it may be months or more before affordable consumer graphic graphic cards are once again available. Isn't that some shit? Like, come on. That's horrible. That's ridiculous. It sucks. It sucks, yeah. right? Oh, my goodness. I w- I'm at, um, I have a GeForce 950, which is just not the best, you know, like I would like a higher one, but I'm going to just have to deal with what I have, you know, because that was They're like. They're selling 1060s for like 600 lot. bucks. Yeah, like 600 that's ridiculous. Bucks. I'm like, no, I'm not going to spend $600 on a graphics card. No, I'm not going to. Especially but 1060, a 1060, the most you, you were supposed to pay for a 1060 now is like 200 bucks tops. Right. And it's, yeah, it's crazy now. So yikes. It's going to be crazy. So yeah, just to let everybody know, that's what that is. <laughs> Don't, if you need to buy a new graphics card, um, let us know. We'll pray for you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Foe. All right. Well, <clears throat> I've been playing a couple of things this week. I've been playing, um, my, my PC gave me some like trouble again. I, my, now this time like Windows wasn't working. I had to figure out how to get into safe mode and fix my Windows that just wasn't doing stuff. So I've been playing a lot of tabletop stuff again. I played a uh, Shade Spire, more Shade Spire. I am hooked on that game. It is so good. When you have a game that is only 12 moves in total, so you only get 12 moves for the whole entire game. So you know, all every move counts, and the game has such good nuances, and the tactics are just so great because you only have those 12 moves, so you have to make the most out of every move you make. So good. Um, <clears throat> so I've been having Warhammer. Is that this is Warhammer Underworld, Warhammer Underworld Shade Spire. Sixty bucks. Sixty bucks, and then it, that comes with two factions. And it comes with the, all the cards that play those two factions. And um, each other faction beyond that is, um, I think, twenty nine ninety nine, if you want to buy more factions. But w- whenever you buy a faction, it comes with all the cards for that faction. But it also comes with a whole bunch of, other, of, of uh, neutral cards. So you kind of want to buy every faction, even if it's a faction you might not like because you want those cards. But for $29 to get everything from that faction is not... Is, a, is a not terrible. It's actually not that bad. It's like everything that's out for Shade Spire right now comes out to about 200 bucks, but you have everything. So whatever list that you could think of that you want to make, you can make it. So you just get everything. You don't got to hunt down rares or legendaries or anything hard. And you have everything the game has to offer. Um, and you don't have to spend 200. You could spend 60 and just get the base game and you have two factions, which are very good. All the cards in the, in, in the uh, base set are very good. You get all the dice, you get all the tokens, you get everything you need to play for $60. And I've just awesome. been having a blast with that. Total fun. Maybe on one episode, if uh, we're not talking about other things, I'll go into like real detail about the game, how to play it, tactics, thing, and things like that. Yeah, and that are might you be cool. Play- is this what you're playing like at... A place or with your family? I play it at the game club and I play it at home with my sons too. My sons love cool. it. Cool. That's cool. I look forward to those days. Sorry, my show notes like kind of I wonder why you me. got quiet. I'm like, did so, you totally leave us? <laughs> I was also playing L5R. I'm in a league now. So that samurai card game I've been playing. Uh-huh. Um, I'm in a league now and I lost my first two league games, which was a bummer. That was and Legend of the Five Rings. Yes, Legend of the Five Rings. What that is. I yes. was a little lost, so thank you. Legend know, of right? the Five Rings is that samurai card game. If you've been watching <laughs> our show or listening to our show, mm. um, I talked about it last week in detail. 
Um, so yeah, so I um, joined a league, and I lost my first two games, unfortunately. So in order to make the top eight cut um, for the main prize at the end, I got to win my next four games. And I played three games, so I, I lost my first two. I won my game last night in like three turns. It was awesome. And I switched up my deck because remember I was talking about last week I was switching up the allies that I was taking with my forces and that made a huge difference and I dominated my last opponent. So that's looking good. So I just got to win three more games in a row to make the top cut. So I'm going to try and make that happen, awesome. <clears throat> which is which which it should happen. So because, you know, then I've been playing Pixar. We just talked about that for a good right. hour. So it Pixar's was not good. an hour. I've been playing it. <laughs> I've been just playing it. There. It totally um, wasn't, but it was I'm having me. fun with it. But <laughs> it video game wise, that's what I've been playing for the past day. Um, and then I was playing Fortnite, and me and my son were going in as duos. And let me tell you something. My son is a beast. He's an absolute beast. In this game. So we won, I think, two or three um, first places because my son's beast. So we were playing that and having a total wow. blast that. Yeah, it's really fun playing. Like, we'll come up on, like, a team and, like, I'll get knocked out. And then I'm, like, I'm telling my son, pick me up. He's, like, all right, give me a second. He'll go kill the other two guys and then he'll come mm -hmm. back and, and, yep. and, and he'll pick me up. You know, so. Um, but we've been having a blast with that. It's, it's I... Here's the thing. A lot of people who play um, other games like uh, PUBG or whatever, they give Fortnite a hard time. That's like it has the, the uh, cartoony graphics. It's not as 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 um. It's not like a real survival shooter. I'm like, let me tell you something. Fortnite, I think, actually has more strategy than games like PUBG. And I am saying that because yeah, the map isn't as huge as as a PUBG map, but the building element. It adds so much yeah. to the game. And when you get good at the building, it actually becomes like a, a weapon to use. Like you could trap people in corners. You could put up a wall real fast if like someone's firing rockets at you. And the whole building aspect just adds so much to that type of game. It's it's a blast. It really does. I think the building aspect is where it definitely draws a line between everybody wants to go, oh, Fortnite, PUBG, like... Fortnite has different tactics and different exactly. tools Exactly. It available. is like it's so fun to like and it's very toss cartoony. up ramps and you feel badass when you're tossing free. up ramps. Yeah, and you're tossing up ramps, you're running up them, jumping off the top of the ramp, yeah. blasting some dude in the head with your shotgun and just moving on. Picking up whatever good loot he had and just keep it moving. <laughs> See, wouldn't that be fun to play as a group? I think it is. It's a blast. I had fun with yeah, just my son. We were having such a good time. That's awesome, and you can, and it's free to play in that version. It's you know? free to play, and so, we were talking that. about Prime Twitch Prime. Oh yeah, I got, got a really cool dope stuff. I got a dope costume for my yes. dude. I look like a Spec Ops dude, like a with with like an urban camo SWAT hood. It's super cool. Now yeah, they did have awesome. they did have uh, back when PUBG was first coming out. They did also have uh, a, a a Twitch Prime pack for that as well. But uh, I think it's cool that they're they've done it for both games now. Yeah, it's it's fun, and the costume was really cool. As as a matter of fact, I was looking through most of the skins. Oh no, I forgot there was a skin that they had when I was playing, and it's 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 been six hours, so they have another skin there. Hopefully, I'll I'll try and get it when I when I when I go back. Alrighty. So the uh, skin awesome. was the skin was like a, a T Rex skin that you could wear. It was a T Rex oh, costume. Oh, that's cool. But oh, it looked, man. but it looked like a costume. It's not like you're in a T Rex rubber suit walking around. I'm a T Rex. No, no. It was like, it was like a, a T Rex hat that like had like the whole head that went over your head, and like it had the fins and stuff. It looked really tactical, but T Rex. It was super oh, funny. that's funny. Yeah, it was cool. Um, and that was fun. And the other thing I've been doing a lot of, I've been writing the campaign for. The uh, Dungeons and Dragons that we have coming up this Saturday. Mm. So Very I've been nice. writing that whole story, getting that going, um, <laughs> putting down some awesome notes, and making up a few characters to have ready for Saturday. That's gonna be a super fun event. That's cool. So if there's anyone who wants to listen in, they can listen in. Right? Is it too late for people to join? If um, they wanted to join. It's kinda. gonna be hard to join. You could get in. Like, I mean, I could write anybody into a story, but we're starting to get like full, kind of. Exactly. So, like, 
once you guys do it in the future or someone else wants to host like a different night or something like that. But right now it's still fun to listen to you guys. It's a lot of fun, especially if you're new, like I am. I love listening to you guys go through the process and I feel like you're really good at just kind of going with the flow, you know, just kind of, you're pretty good on your toes when it comes to what's going on when we're listening. Yeah. Well, you have to be, because you have to be able to, you know, you have to you have to interact with the players, so you yeah, have to, you know, you things new, change though, in a moment's so notice. Know. But I think you do good from what I'm listening to. I think it works well with everything that's going on. And that's every other Saturday. Yeah, it's like every once every two weeks. Gaming group. Right. Cool. Perfect. And that takes a lot of work. You don't just chintz. I mean, like, you do updates and stuff in the channel of the story, like, after everybody participates in that day, you do, like, a summary of everything, like, the next day or a couple days later, like, you write it all out, and it's really cool. That takes a lot of work, too. Well, I do that for that everybody who is like wanting to um, keep up with it, which I think yeah, is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. But I also do that a little bit for me too. So I, I, um, if I ever need to go back and like right. and like archive what's happening in the story, what has happened, I could go back and look. Exactly, because it's different from what I, I mean. Just from an outsider looking in, it's different than someone who this is all they do, and this is not all you do. You know what I mean? Like you host on two different podcasts, your dad, your husband, and you work full time. Exactly. You know what I right. mean? You it's don't have this thing to do to devote one hundred percent of your time to. You know, and you do a pretty damn good job for doing what you can do you know on top of everything else you do so kudos to you i do most of my writing for it on the train like i just yeah, pop out a little notebook and i just and you do good write things down yeah that is that's true people underestimate the amount of time it takes to to produce stuff so that's cool all right mr cricket what's up with you i've said most most of myself uh, so far i've been playing a lot of you know pixar for the past couple of days um i was away for the weekend and got, you know, got to play some breath of the wild um but i did however get into the arc mobile uh beta on for my uh my ios devices um i had signed up for it um saying that i was going to play it on the ipad and I realized afterwards I probably should have also said I you know, I could have played it on my iPhone 7. And, uh, you know, so I got my invite. I installed it. I was able to install it on my iPhone 7. I installed it on my iPad. But it uh, it says that basically it's not powerful enough to play it. So I didn't try playing on my iPad at all. Um, I've had that, you know, had that for a while. So I didn't really um, expect it to, you know, necessarily run that well. Which uh, iPad is it, so that people know? It's not the to iPad. Even try. It's the iPad two. Okay. Or no, it's the no, it's not the iPad two. It's the I can't even think of what which one it is now. It, it's it's like five or six years old. It's, okay. You know, it's not it's not the current gen at all. Um, so yeah, I I played it a little bit. Um, th- there is an NDA that you know you have to agree to, so I'm not going to really say anything about it. Um, except that you know it, it's fun so far. It it looks just like Arc. Um, the, the graphics are you know, are very comparable to it, even though they're on the they're on the small screen. There's you know a few things that you know that are a little bit a little bit different uh, from it. You know some some features that seem kind of nice to it. Uh, I guess one thing you know, one thing I will mention is when you passively or passively taming something and it's hungry again, it gives you a visual icon from far away that it's hungry again. So that's a neat thing. That's like oh, I hope they put that in in the the, the full version because. That would be nice instead of having to sit there right on its butt all the time and say, "Are you ready for food?" You can see an icon over its head saying, "Hey, I'm I'm ready for food." Um, I've died a bunch of times. I haven't really crafted anything because uh, I've only played it, you know, for maybe you know 20 minutes total. Um, just had so much other stuff going on uh, that I really haven't gotten a, a chance to really play it yet. Uh, so uh, I'll I'll try to get some more uh, time on it, but it's one of those things that you know I. I don't feel that I, you know, most of the times when I'm messing on my phone, it's when I have, you know, 15, 20 minutes. I don't really feel like I can do much with 15, 20 minutes on it. Although it does connect pretty much instantly. You know, there's no 15, 20 minutes to get onto a server. It might just be, you know, because it's, you know, it's the the beta and there's just, you know, a small collection of people playing it. Uh, But hopefully, you know, for the sake of, it's one thing if you're, you start up your computer and you say join it, join a server and spend 15, 20 minutes you're doing other things. It's another thing for your handheld game to take that long. So I hope that they keep that fast connection for it. Um, the other game that I pl- played a little bit, I played for a couple hours the other day, was one that I got from my Humble Monthly. It's called Lost Castle. 
It's a little indie game. It it looked uh, when I when I looked at it, it looked kind of like uh, Castle Crashers. If anybody had played that, where it's a very cartoony, uh, you know, kind of a three D side scroller, uh, where you're you're this you're, you're this character and you're hacking and slashing through old creatures, uh, kind of like the old you know punch them games. Uh, it looks like you can play it multiplayer. I haven't tried playing it multiplayer at all. Um, I, assuming you can probably play it multiplayer, you know, hot seating at the same at the same computer. Uh, as well as online. Uh, one thing that's a little bit different with this game than with uh, Castle Crashes, though, is each time you die, um, you had collected so many souls from the creatures that you killed, and that's basically experience points. And then when you die, you get to you know, use those to try to level up your you know your different stat you know some of your different stats in there. But then when you essentially you get reincarnated um, into another character and. You know, visually they they, you know, they look a little different, but also they start off with a with a different weapon. Um, I've had you know, uh, you know double daggers, uh, you know, a musket, uh, a wand, uh, a long sword, uh, you know, some things like that. So each character starts off with a different weapon, but I don't think uh, otherwise they're mechanically any different. Um, you can collect different weapons as you go through and swap them out and everything. Uh, so. I don't think it matters all that much what weapon you start with, but it's like I said, it's it seems like a decent game. I'll, I'll and this is Lost Castle. Lost Castle, yes. And nine ninety nine on Steam. Uh, maybe I I got it yeah. as part of my humble bundle. Uh, oh, for, okay. For this past month, because uh, I'm a, I have a humble monthly. Oh, uh, that's cool. I so, did um put the link to it in Steam. It's only nine ninety nine okay. right now on Steam. Yeah. So with, with humble monthly, you you pay a subscription, and I. Want to say it's twenty bucks, maybe thirty, and you get usually between like eight and ten games. No, every humble month. monthly's uh, twelve, like twelve. Oh, twelve. And so, okay, yeah. so one of the games you get every month is usually always a triple A, you know, fifty or sixty dollar game. I got Dark Souls three, I think, this month. Yep. Um, as well as you know a bunch, you know, a bunch of other games, and you know, as you can see, this game right here would have been ten dollars on itself. So, you know, if it's a game you're, you know, that I was interested in. The you know the subscription would have paid you know essentially paid for it itself in this case. I have a few others that came with with that that I haven't spun up yet, but uh, it's and one. It has those, very positive reviews on Steam. Yeah, all the games that that came out this month and most of them usually have you know you know positive or you know overwhelmingly positive. So you know it's one of those that you know it's fun to play. There's another one called something like Holy Potatoes Were in Space. Uh, oh, okay. It, it looks like it's yeah. You know, it might be a fun game. I'm gonna try that one out. It's a you know, very kind of cartoony. Uh, it looks like a you know, I don't know. Maybe it's like a, a cartoony Eve or something because it looks like a, a, you build your you build your spaceship and do stuff with it. Um, but we'll see. I'll, I'll you know probably full route it at some point. You know, for a couple hours here and there. Um, I guess the other thing as far as what I've been watching is I've been going through Psych, the uh, the old was it TNT. Uh, I, TV show yeah, was TNT. I don't remember what network it was. Uh, whatever on. network it was on, but yeah, I'm, I'm going through that again just because it's something that I can stream in that you know stream in the background as I'm working. Uh, you know, I, I love that show. Uh, my wife and I we always loved it because John and Gus are basically the same exact ages as we were. They graduated the same year that that we did, so all their references, you know, when they go back and have references to you know 80s stuff, it hits us right at home because. It's our, you know, it's our generation. It's our childhood. Mm-hmm. So, and just you know, the interaction between them, you know, it, it just you know how one, th- you know, how Sean will throw something out there, and Gus will just pick up on it and just basically go with just about every single, you know, joke that he says. It's it's just hilarious. If you haven't seen it, I'd watch it. It's, yeah, Psych is a super fun show. It's five or six seasons, so there's a lot of stuff out there. They did they release the move the new movie? I don't know if the movie's out yet. Because there's a movie either coming out very soon or it just came out like within the past year. Um, so that's part of what you know made me think of. Let's watch this again. Um, so I'll have to see if the movie's out yet. But um, you know, if it if it is out, I'm going to watch it. If it's not out, I'm going to watch it when it comes out. Um, so I highly recommend that show. And I guess that's about all I have to to talk about uh, that I haven't already said. Alrighty, I have not seen Psych, but it says it is a detective comedy drama. Yeah, you. It, were, uh, yeah. So, uh, have you ever seen The Mentalist? Yes, I freaking loved so, The Mentalist. So I was Psych, so mad when it got canceled. So Psych, I think, started before The Mentalist, but think of The Mentalist, but 
a comedy version of the Mentalist. Okay, well that and, is cool. And like I said, so, you know, basically he, the, the character he's uh, he's got, you know, he's hyper perceptive. His father was a was a police officer, and he and as he was growing up, his father was basically training him how to, you know, to be a cop. He, you know, he would put him through scenarios of, you know, he would they'd walk into a room and he'd have him close his eyes and say, "How many hats are in the room?" And he'd have to sit there and remember from what he saw in that, you know, that thirty seconds or that ten seconds, and point it out. He could um, be a little bit of a jerk. Oh, yes. Okay. And and so that hyper you know perception you know is what he uses. Um, he, you know, in one of the flashback you know things you see you know something you know something happened. He he got arrested for for uh, for stealing the car, and so because of that record, he couldn't actually become a cop you know, like his father. Uh-huh. So uh, he. He still likes going to the crime scenes and basically trying to solve the crimes. And at, you know, in the first episode, he goes to a crime scene. He kind of points out some facts that they missed, and he helps solve the crime. They're kind of like, "How do you know this?" He's like, "Well, because I'm a psychic." <laughs> and so then he basically that's his thing. His he he then he opens up this private investigative service of he's a psychic and he's going to solve your crimes because of that. And he calls it psych. And you know, you know, the whole thing is, you know, you know, the whole, you know, 80, you know 80s lines are psych. You know, I'm, I'm kidding you. I'm right. Josh. You know, that's right. exactly what he's doing. He's I, lying I gotta, I, out his ass to them. Slight, but, very short rant here. I hate it when people spell it S I K E because it's definitely P S Y C C H E. Like, why do you? Sp- I mean, I know it's the phonetic spelling, but don't spell it that way. That's not how it's spelled. <laughs> oh, no, because <laughs> they're not so snobs. Like- that's why. <laughs> But it yes, said that this was a USA. Um, USA, show. that's right. USA yeah, that Monk. Just makes it came sense. out around yep. the same time as Monk and all that. But oh, yep, just... it did say that. Yep, it but said yeah, it, it came out immediately following the fifth season premiere of Monk. But yes, so it, that's cool. it's just a, a hilarious show. It, and you're it, watching it on what platform? I'm watching right it off Amazon Prime. Oh, that's cool. Cool. It was on Netflix for a while. I don't know if it's still there though. That's what I was I, wondering. I don't know if it is or not. I can't uh, stream Netflix from work based on um, the yeah. firewalls, but I can get to Amazon. <laughs> so, oh, there you go. That's one of the reasons why I dun, you know, dun, 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 dun. why I watched this because I was looking at Amazon and uh, I was watching Sabrina the Teenage Witch for a while, but I, I nice. But I'm on site. <laughs> so nice. right now. <laughs> well, I mean, my my parents Hot. and grandparents loved Aww. to watch Sabrina when I was growing up. So right, I know, yeah, it's a very. You said they wouldn't let you, or they, they no, it? they loved to watch it. Okay, like, yeah. That's so, cute. but a, a lot uh, of psych kind of reminds me <laughs> of. Like Scrubs, as far as its, yeah. its style of humor and some of the interactions you have between you know the main characters, you know the the white main character and his black uh, friend, uh, it is like Turk and JD. And cool. So I highly recommend it. We have it. all these links to everything we've talked to, you way longer than what we anticipated. <laughs> But, but doesn't that always happen as well? It always does. No, we've been doing really well. <laughs> but tonight we had a lot to say. So, but that's just fine. Because everybody who couldn't hang with the big dogs already left. So we will... Uh, I mean, I'm surprised I'm still here. But, I really know. am surprised. I am surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so are we ready yeah. to rock out last call? Yes. All right, here we go. It's closing time. You don't have to go, <laughs> but you can stay here. Okay, it's closing time. Um, if you have any shout outs, share them now or wait a week. I just wanted to say you can join us in the games we play at Cross Rebellion, CrossRealmRebellion.com. And you can follow us on Twitter at Cross Realm Pod. And uh, yeah, would you guys have any last calls? All right, um, episode five, Cross Realm Podcast. Thanks for listening. Hot. <laughs> Hot. Hot. <laughs> Hot. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>